Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. I am Minister Stokes, <clears throat> a.k.a. Rabbi Stokes, uh, Rabbi Cameron. <laughs> Actually, we have a really good topic tonight, um, and I'm waiting for our panelists to get on tonight. Uh, we have a very interesting conversation. Um, tonight, we're going to be diving into systemic racism um, and dealing with some of those topics that we so much going on um, in our world today um, from uh, from looting, rioting, uh, all of the different things that's been going on, um, a lot of race, uh, race issues in every city. Um, and so we're going to have the conversation tonight around the table um, to discuss what's happening and also discuss why the church is um, silent on these matters. Now, I'm waiting for uh, Bishop uh, Raritan to come on tonight. And another uh, guest um, friend of mine, uh, Brother Toshan, will be joining us tonight. We did have to reschedule for a part two of this discussion tonight with Dr. Uh, Marvin Cinquinetti. Uh, um, he actually had a, a different um, broadcast that he had to do. Um, and he, uh, I'm not sure what happened, but it was some kind of mix up there with our schedule. So he will be on. Uh, real soon, um, and we'll have him back on again um, in April, I believe, the 1st of April, which is uh, the Wednesday, same time, uh, 5 p.m., I believe it's 11 p.m. at his time. So we definitely will have him back on as well, and we will continue to have this discussion. I'm going to quickly show again uh, this commercial uh, that I showed upon you coming on um, so I can get my guests into uh, the conversation tonight. So bear with us for a few. Enough of that. We are back. I do apologize about that. 
uh, to those who are here that are watching. We're about to get into it. It's really going to be a good conversation. Uh, we had a little technical um, issues there with getting our panelists on um, into our back room, but they are here. They are in the background. I'm not going to hold us up any longer. I'm going to bring them right on. We have Bishop uh, uh, Barrington and we have Brother Toshon bringing them in now. There we are. There they are. Hey, brothers. Hey, hey, hey. Peace, peace. Brothers. Yeah. I'm so sorry about that, brothers. I'm not too sure um, what happened with the um, with, with with the technical issues, but we are here. Okay. Good to be here. I'm going to get out of, because uh, Toshon, I have that, my brand posted on here. There we go. So now we're clear. Okay, gentlemen, welcome to the round table tonight. We are going to get into it tonight. Um, Mr. Brayton, thank you for, for coming on. Um, I know we had a discussion today with uh, Dr. Sequinetti, and we will have a follow-up conversation with him um, at a later time. But we did definitely bring Toshon on here tonight. Brother Toshon, good to see you, man. It's been a while. Likewise. Yeah, it's been a while. How you doing? When, when, when I heard he's bringing you on and he told me what you're going to be saying, I said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely felt like it would be a very interesting conversation. Um uh, Brother Toshon does have a different perspective, so um, I, I think it's really good to entertain um, all the different perspectives so we can have this conversation. Before um, we start, is it? Are you, yeah. can you tell me where we are um, so I can share this right now so everybody can, can see it? Absolutely. We are on the Apostolic Apologetics page. Okay. Not the House of Hospital page. Okay. I do have the streaming also to YouTube, um, and that's uh, Rabbi Cam. Uh, round table, but I mean, it's okay. So we're at the people, top. People are not, yeah, people are not used to that. So let me see. Uh, how's the audio on my end? Very good. Okay. Very good. So I'm, I'm looking on the Apostolic yeah. Apologetics page. I don't really see it broadcasting, brother, just to let you know. It should be. It was posted and everything on that page. Um, the the uh, the countdown for it and everything was there. That was okay. Yeah, I did see you on there. It came up on my iPad. Yeah, oh, I, see, I see us. I see us. Yes, yeah, yeah, not perfect. on the Hasidim one, but it's definitely on that one. Yeah, I see us. I see us. Hold on. Yeah, I see you right now. I'm just going to share it to all of my spots and then we can get on our way. Uh, one thing that I'm going to do too tonight as we as we dive into the conversation, brothers, when you do talk, I'm going to mute my computer because I know there's been some feedback sometimes. And I, I think it's because of my because of my mic. Um, that when, when it's on and someone is talking, it gives some feedback. So I'll definitely mute that. You might want to mute yours as well whenever someone is talking. But anyway, so, so, so let's, let's dive into the conversation tonight. Uh, there's a lot of things happening in our world, right, nationally, in our cities. Um, so much going on um, regarding this, 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 this thing we call race. So our topic tonight was uh, uh, Mr. Baratton, do you, do you want to say that phrase that we had tonight for our conversation? Um, running a race from behind. Running a race from behind. And he's All going right. to have some clarity on that. But we're going to deal with systemic the systemic issues of racism tonight. Um, we're going to talk about some different nuances of, of there's some, some of us have different ideas of racism. And, and so we're going to bring that out, which is going to be really interesting tonight with uh, Brother Toshan. And we're also going to and talk about how the church is silent you know, I, I hear that a lot about uh, the Christian church is silent on these matters. And so we're going to dive into that and have this good conversation. So I'm going to regress a little bit. I'm going to let uh, Bishop Barrettin, if he would go ahead and kind of like just detail us around that topic and we can jump right into the discussion. Okay. God bless everybody. And Father, just be with us as we have this conversation in Jesus name. Tonight, um, the, the reason I, 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 I coined the phrase running the race from behind is simply because um, how we live in this Western construct, um, the Western world was not created so that black individuals could be part of the economic uh, conversation. Um, they were, it, was never, it was never branded um, or put together to, to benefit peoples of the African diaspora. So essentially um, when the Western colonizer um, developed his his or her um, guilt about the condition of of slavery. Um, the black 
uh, populace of the Western Hemisphere now became a conversation of how to include them in society. And so essentially we, um, we inherited um, 400 years um, of being in a race that we were starting from behind. We started economically behind. Um, we started institutionally behind. We started um, with the inability to to have laws written by us and for us. Um, we started with the the inability to pass on wealth, and uh, we also started um, with the inability to know who we are. And so, with all of those things, you essentially start from behind. You start. You don't know who you are. Uh, you don't know where you are. You don't know where you came from. You don't know the laws that can help you. you don't know the laws that can hurt you. Um, you have an absenteeism of wealth, of an absenteeism of representation, um, but you have the same responsibilities and needs that every other human being has, but you're stuck in a, in a place that was built to keep you under submission. Turn your, turn your mic on, turn your mic on, man. Turn your mic. <laughs> Sorry, can y'all hear me? No feedback. <laughs> you, can, you can probably, you can probably get easy. Listen, my wife makes fun of me all the time because when I'm on here, I, sometimes I have other meetings that I'm on here, and I'm, I'm hollering, I'm talking, and when hears me, I'm like, oh, I'm muted. So my wife makes a joke every day about that. I'm, <laughs> I'm muted all the time. I thought I clicked it, but anyway. So, so Toshon, what do you think, brother Toshon? What do you think about that, that statement there that uh, Bishop uh, Barrington gave us about um, the running behind? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I do agree that we are, um, you know, if we want to use the metaphor of a race, uh, I think we are running a race from behind. But I definitely don't think it has to do with um, systematic, uh, uh, systemic oppression. Um, you know, slavery existed at a time, but a hundred years ago, much closer to slavery, black people were doing better uh, at the time than they are now in many respects. Um, the most important ones like family, um, out of wedlock birth rates, um, education, even if they didn't attain a high school diploma, what they actually knew the words that they knew, that they knew how to spell, the mathematics that they knew how to do was advanced beyond um, your average first or second year undergraduate student today. Um, you can actually Google some of the eighth grade tests from the early 20th century. And these were tests that black people were taking. Um, so you had a lot of, you know, fourth grade, eighth grade dropouts, but they also knew how to raise a family and run a farm. They could start a business. So, you know, we I, I think that we we are running from behind uh, or running this race from behind. Um, I guess to keep the analogy going, because we we're living uh, running running the race on a crutch, uh, the crutch of victimhood. Um, the crutch of self-destruction. Um, you know, we're not, this is not the United States of America of 200, 300 years ago. But even at that time, you know, the, as far as I understand, uh, the first or one of the first uh, slave owners in the United States was a black man. Um, you know, I'm not a, a proponent for slavery, so I don't want to come on here and, and uh, celebrate slavery. But, you know, I, I, I don't want to treat it. I don't think I, I'll say it this way. I don't. I think of it as the way of the world at that time. So everybody that was participating in the marketplace were. On one side of that equation, everybody, um, the people don't really take a moral position on their economics. 
So when you're born into an economic system, you just start to participate. And that's not what we're dealing with today. What we're dealing with today in black neighborhoods um, is a lack of accountability, largely uh, broken families, uh, lack of education. Um, Can you, you define know, over, a black neighborhood? What's a black neighborhood to you? You said what is a black neighborhood? Define, define, in America, define what a <laughs> black neighborhood is. Um. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of your caricature, Black neighborhood. So I, I'm not talking about the ones that I know exist, but are much fewer and, and further between um, than, than the sort of caricature, uh, caricature that I'm thinking about. But um, the, the reality is not very far from the caricature. So if I were to say uh, North Philly, or let's say I run a string of cities together, North uh, uh, Philadelphia, uh, Chicago, Baltimore. Uh, so you're New calling Lata those black neighborhoods because black people live there? That's, that's um, the thing? Largely, yeah, yeah. largely. So I, I'm not really if I use that definition, then the prison is also a black neighborhood. Because a black neighborhood- a black, Yeah, it's a black neighborhood. I agree neighborhood. with that. So it a black is a black neighborhood. A definition of a black neighborhood to me must be a neighborhood we own or it's not a black neighborhood. It's just a neighborhood no. where black people live. Well, that's 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 true. What, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but you can live in a neighborhood that you don't own. Right. That's right. possible. But it's not your it's neighborhood. Like, don't call no, it. No, no, no. You know what I'm no, saying? No, 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 I understand. Um, but I, I think that's more of a semantic thing. The reason no, I, I don't want to I said it because if you're if you're trying to define the behavior of black people based on what we call colloquialism the black neighborhood we have to look at who owns the neighborhood the neighborhood was created to segregate in America to segregate black people to a specific place and put them in a specific hegemonic disability so if you're if you're saying now that why you uh, why you take that position because that, that's why we, are, we, we understand that in, in, in America, things like the Affordable Housing Act were created allegedly to support black people in owning or having shelter, but it never turned out to be that. It turned out to be a scenario where black people were put separate from whites, ghettos were created, redlining even around houses that they were supposed to be able to own. They couldn't borrow money to buy those particular places people wanting to buy those houses from them, the banks wouldn't lend them money. So those neighborhoods that we call black neighborhoods, those neighborhoods, what we find in those neighborhoods is that we don't, we don't own most of the houses there. We don't own most of the businesses there. And that we are now also policed very, very stringently by individuals who aren't necessarily even of our community. Our money does not circulate in those neighborhoods even twice so those really are not black neighborhoods. Black neighborhoods would be places like Black Wall Street and places that they destroyed. But I don't think the hood can be called a black neighborhood. It's not a black neighborhood. And, 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 and if I'm not mistaken, uh, if I can just butt in real quick, if I'm mistaken, yeah. Toshon, I think what I hear you saying, I love what uh, Bishop Barrington said, because it, 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 there's layers to this. Um, and there is the political, social, political aspect of uh, um, and, and, and I appreciate that because that kind of shows the ignorance in, I think, and when we make that expression, but it's a casual expression, Tosho, and I, because I know usually when we talk about Philadelphia, we're both from Philadelphia, and when we talk about the hood or we talk about certain certain pockets of Philadelphia, we say that that's black community, that's the black area. Um, well, predominantly are black black people who live, black and brown people that live there, right? Yeah, well... I am taking the position that in large part, these, these are black neighborhoods. Now, if we want to use different terminology relative to ownership and, you know, I'm fine with that. But um, when we go to these neighborhoods, we're not seeing a systemic oppression we're not seeing oppression based on race. When you go into one of these areas, 
where black people reside and you see trash on the streets, it's not because there's a system in place that sends a garbage truck through there to drop off garbage. The opposite happens. The system sends a, sends trucks through day after day to collect trash in these neighborhoods. And now they're not collecting all of the trash, but they're not the ones that's messing up uh, the neighborhood. They, they are not messing up the schools. You could give a child today a textbook from 1920, falling apart and doing whatever. As long as they have the information, they can excel. So there's, you know, I, again, I, I, I don't really want to quibble about what we call things or, you know, I'm in agreement with very precise speech. But, you know, from time to time, I will be speaking colloquially. So, I, you know, I'll probably say something. No, I, and I brought it up. I brought it up to make a point. It wasn't trying to call you out, but it was to make a point. No, 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 no. I understand. I understand. We have to look at this from a very, from the very bedrock up. I agree. So, you know, it's easy for us to call things black neighborhood, but then we have to ask ourselves the question, why? You talked about a textbook from 1920. You know, can I learn from a textbook from 1920? And, and I'll say I'll say to you, my kids can't learn from that textbook. My kids require a computer to sit in front of them in order to learn. But my, for example, and I, and I use an analogy saying that um, we were further ahead at, educationally um, in the let's say the, the 19th century or, or you know after slavery than we are now. My child knows how to use the internet better than me. My child knows how to use a computer and social media better than me. So does that mean that that you know when I when I look at this child's ability to to deal with with um, technology and to deal with uh, their their social media and and this new landscape, um, and and will I look at my child and say, oh, um, this child is is either better educated or worse educated based on their capacity to learn social media. I think we're looking at it the wrong way. When you look at education, education is only only purpose of education. There's only one real purpose of it, the way the educational scenario works today. The ability to, to gain skills to earn income. The educational system is creating employees. It's supposed to be the ability to get an idea so that you can create a landscape to cause yourself to never probably have to work. But that's what education is. Does education for black people now, does it create the ability for us to earn income and for us to, to, to build our own communities? 100%. Black does. people at the time you're speaking about were, were forbidden from specific types of educational opportunities. They were given skills. Well, no, I, I am referring to, now, I mean, there may have been certain schools that uh, black people could not attend. The so-called Negro could not attend, but that does not mean they could not attend school. Black people have been getting college degrees for a long time. And black people today would be better off with 20 times more plumbers, electricians, drywall hangers, mechanics, uh, software coders, uh, UI, UX engineers, and data analysts. So I'm not... But those are skilled. That's skilled labor, bro. You're, yeah, you're I, you're I, I understand that. You're no, not no, talking no, about I, people who think and create civilization. Black people no, no, but that, that is who No, but, but that is who creates civilizations. When, when we consider... Even right now, when you go outside, the, the bulk of the civilization that you see, if a media comes and kills everybody tonight, what's going to be left are some buildings, some charred cars, some bridges, uh, some paved roadways, some tunnels. The, that civilization. So you can, t you know, t t make entrepreneurs all day long, which is fine. Some of those smart entrepreneurs are going to say, you know what, let me go ahead and be a plumber. 
and somebody else is going to say he's getting all that business and I don't want to set up a plumbing company. So since ain't nobody being a plumber, let me go be a plumber. I'm going to work for that guy. So economics is economics, whether you're an employee, whether you're a business owner, we're talking about opportunities being there. You would be an employee for a million dollars uh, rather than be a business owner for $60,000. The title wouldn't matter to you because the million dollars would matter much more. That's not true because you have a president and you're, you have a president who's a multimillionaire, so-called billionaire, who d divested himself of his billions of dollars so that he <clears throat> can control your country. So you well, he didn't give up. He didn't give up his billions of dollars. He didn't do that. So he's not. He, this is not the working man that I'm referring to. I'm not talking about billionaires. But I'm saying I'm the talking difference to, between what you're talking about. You're talking about labor and I'm talking about civilization builders. And a no, no, I'm, I'm only talking about civilization, though. But, but I understand that more, a philosopher is just as important or more important than, than a plumber. I, I, an engineer I, or an architect is more important than a guy who's a, who's a brick mason. I, I 100 percent agree with you. The idea That's what I'm, is what's most important. And this is a problem no, no. in our community. Our community right now has to come up with a new idea, and the new idea is not to become more brick masons and to become um, more plumbers. It is it is to it is to run a nation. Because the nation you currently are under is not, you are not running it. It's running you. Well, and, that, but that's true of every nation throughout history that you can name right now. There's no, you could literally say that about any nation. If that's just if we're going to say it. But what does that even mean? What does it mean that the nation is running you and you're not running it? No human, no single human being could be put in a position where they could make a claim any more than we could today to say we're running the nation because we are running the nation. This is the people of this nation voted Donald Trump in the office. Not all of them, but that it doesn't matter. The people of this nation did. Now we can get into the Electoral College because the Electoral College actually did it, but that's what's in place. That's, that's what we the system uh, that we're born into, that we uh, benefit from, it, you know, for some things, it just, it is what it is. But this is what systemic so, means. Systemic means that in all of those systems, in all of those places, all of those places known and unknown, there is a built predilection to make sure that you and I are not in a position to be ahead. That is that is the conspiracy theory th concept of systemic racism that I totally understand them. yeah it's all broken it's all broken yeah. and biased made um, um designed so that anytime we show can up we point to something can we point to something in respect to systemic racism mm -hmm. I can I can point to the Negro Act of 1740. No no can we point to something today in 2020 can we point to something and say that is See, because I know that they used to they used to have uh, horse carriages, mm -hmm. and you know there are horse carriages somewhere, but they're not common. I can go outside, I can look around, and I can bear witness that horse carriages are not common. Right. So, so, so. so can I, I'm, can, can I, can I, I go back? I could answer his question. Can I go back to 1993 at least and talk about um, my 1993? Well, I was hired as a police officer in Toronto, Canada, for a reason though. We had something that was called the social contract. And the social contract identified that individuals that look like me did not represent the public sector. And so the, the premier or the governor, composite scenario of the, of the person over this, the province said that what we require is a social contract insisting that every single government agency under the province must hire a specific amount of qualified individuals of this specific, a specific ethnicity. And so what happened was the police force could not push through another class of individuals that they needed. In that time, the police needed more people unless there was a certain amount of black people who are going through in that class. I applied during the time of the social contract 
And because I applied at that time, even though much more white men were applying than any other demographic, me as a black person coming in, who was also qualified, my resume was put was was held dear because I was one of the few black people being in representing my community. This is 1993 that laws have to be passed so that black people can be hired mm -hmm. to work for public sector jobs. That's see, well, it, it, this was see that was kind of what I was going to ask too, Toshon. I'm thinking about subjectivity, right? So, from my experience as a black man working in Philadelphia, right? as an educator and the things that I go through on my job as a black educator and having to be, I have to work harder than my counterparts. I have to have more education. I have to have, I believe that I have to have more certified. I don't believe that. But so I'm talking from my experience. So maybe what you could do is kind of help me understand what my mindset. Means. Where, where's your evidence though? Where, where's your evidence that see, this my is so, so, my, so my, my evidence would be my experience, right? I can only speak from my experience as a black man where the majority of people who are working or not, that are in leadership are not black. We had a race and equity uh, training at one point, and I didn't know this terminology, but basically the terminology was that I was the token Negro, if you will, the token African-American Person, there, there are just to say we have diversity or we have a man, right? A heterosexual man that's colored that is on the team. But for me, there were other people who were in my position with my title that didn't, they were not certified. They didn't have the, the credentials that who are I, not who are not black is what you should you should who are not black. black. Well, yeah, but it's, I you mean. Yeah, but but we can't say that that's totally subjective. That's just what you think that's the case, but it may not be the case. Maybe that's, that's what systemic racism is. It is something. No, that no, you can't I, put your finger on it because, but you, but you see the results. See, I, I'm not, um, and and I'm not saying this is you, uh, by any means, um. I, I'm not on I, like I'm not on the woke wave. Again, I'm I'm not talking about you or you Stokes. I, I'm I'm more saying talking about the time. So back in '98, '99, I was organizing in the streets. You know, I all all those grassroots organizations. All your you know back when Umar Johnson was just on Cecil B. Uh, Cecil B. Moore and, um, the new Black Panther Party was popping. Dr. Khalil Muhammad was still alive. Nobody, nobody has read more uh, political philosophy. Uh, at, I would say at my age, I don't. Mean, you'd be hard pressed to find one person. I, I didn't dug into, you know, I understand the political philosophy of Huey Newton, uh, George Jackson, Mao. Um, you know, I just studied the Lenin and Lenin, the Leninists and Stalin and the Stalinists. Um, I I've memorized the Malcolm X speeches and the Fred Hampton. Hey, Toshon, Toshon, is is your is your computer okay? Cause you're you're um pausing a lot. But I can hear him clearly. I can hear. Yeah, you can hear. But yeah, you're okay, it looks fine to me. Um, All right, cool. Yeah, I'm you're not good. sure. Um, so I'm not really coming from a from like a total like I've been there. I've been at the rallies giving the speeches back when, you know, the black, the black stuff was just the black ish. It was just something you do when you pop in Pearl of Africa when you on South Street. You don't go upstairs because you know, but you, you go back, go there to buy your books and your little like back then. I was on all this type time times a hundred. I don't wrote books and the whole nine. So I get the arguments. But, but just because the argument can be created doesn't make it true. Because, see, like, I can point to systemic from, let's say, from my side. I can point to systemic uh, advantages. I can talk about affirmative action. I can talk about your social contract. 
I can point to something specific, put my finger on it, and say that's that's it. This is it here. This, this is what, affirmative why action. Why does it thing. have to be created? Why do you have to create affirmative action? Why does it have well, to? Well, you be don't have to create. Well, you don't have to create affirmative action. So that's really part of the conversation. Why did they have to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1968? Why? Uh, they didn't. I mean, they passed it for white people. <laughs> no, 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 no. So hey, let me make sure I'm not sounding too crazy. I understand that we had a period of segregation. <laughs> uh, be too late for that one, man. <laughs> no, well, I understand that this stuff happened. You know, I I get as much as I can get to what the climate was like. You know, I have to rely on my imagination like anybody else who wasn't alive at the time. Uh, what I can observe, the records that I come across, I get it. I get it. But what I'm saying is that today, like, let me let me narrow it down to a microcosm and probably bounce back out. Almost anything that Black Lives Matter is talking about today is irrelevant. It's totally irrelevant. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Statement, man. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before you get to that point, because we do have an audience here, I'm gonna come back to that because that's gonna take uh -huh. us another, that's gonna take us on another uh, mountaintop, which you just said about affirmative okay. So that that's hold for that, hold that for one moment. Oh, uh, uh, you said about affirmative action or Black Lives Matter? Black Lives, Black Lives Matter. Matter, I'm sorry, yeah. yes, that. So okay. hold that. We're gonna come back to that, put it in part. I do wanna Don't forget. entertain I, I wanna right entertain. Now. Yeah, yeah. I want to entertain one of the comments that were made by the audience here. I do have a screen. They say they just passed a law, and I can't, and viewers do know, if I don't call your name, it's not because I'm ignoring you. Um, uh, the system does kind of protect your identity, so it doesn't allow us to show your unless name. Unless you're registered, yeah. Unless you're registered, right, and you want to. So whoever this is out here, I don't know who you are, but we're going to quote you. So they said they just passed a law last year that you couldn't be fired because of natural hair which means people will fire, people were fired, sorry, for natural hair, and that's a part of systemic racism. No, it's not. It's not a part of systemic racism. Not at all. If if you don't want to hire somebody that has natural hair, that's your choice. This is the United States of America. If you don't want to hire somebody because of the color of their skin, I, me, I don't really care. I already know that if you make that decision, the marketplace is going to eat you up in a week. You won't survive because a store but what about hair? that but, what does, about, but, but, but hair is different. Well, hair is different. But if again, if an employer, if somebody says, I don't want to see hair that goes this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. I want a little narrow box of but hair. They said, but but, but check this out, though. Pay attention to what they said, though. I got your point. That's a good point. They said natural hair, not process. No, 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 no. That, well, that's 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 what no, that's but that's what we say when we're talking about it. So it's not as if a woman who has her hair in lock and wears her hair pulled back every day and has a bun or lets her hair hang down like regular long hair just in locks. Ain't nobody getting fired for that. Now, if you want to have somebody the way my hair was looking a couple weeks ago, I'm twisting in it all day and it's all right. way up to here. I got, I got, I got my hair. legs on right now. They might not hire Kinda me. like that, but it's a little wilder. But you know what? You might not want, like, you probably, probably couldn't wear your hair that way when you were a police officer. I wouldn't have been able to wear my hair that way when I worked at the Ritz Carlton, I that's wouldn't right. even be able to that's have right. it there. You're correct. Because You're correct. that's You're correct. that. Because that's this year would have definitely stopped me from saving somebody's life. I mean, if well, I had this bit of hair on my head, the gun wouldn't have worked properly in my hand. The car wouldn't have worked. My brain would be completely different with this. No, <laughs> no, no. But, but I don't think it's the same. It's like if you got a guy in the army, he right. doesn't need that. He doesn't need that fatigue print on to shoot the gun. But you say, bro, put your uniform on, Jimmy. You keep coming out here in your t-shirt every day. You know how to load the weapon. That's fine. But put your uniform on, man. You but, see, I, but, 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 see, but, see, but see, I agree. I agree with every place has its thing, right? Whatever that thing is, as far as standards and codes are concerned. 
I think the concern is when you're telling someone to alter their physical, what God has created them to have. But nobody out of their head. To alter nobody that. does that. Well, wait a minute. But we're not That's talking not about like the crazy parts and the, the, the different colors and stuff. But that is what we're talking about. Natural hair. No, no. no. That's you what disagree with that? We, you disagree with that? That's what we talk about when we want to talk about all of the hell that's heaped on the black man every day. But that's not what's going on in the world. We all been, we've all had jobs for, for a long time. I have literally never come across anybody complaining about the fact that they got fired because of their hair. According, now, to, if your hair according, to, right, according to the viewer here, they did say that it's not a hairstyle, it's natural hair. And yes, that, that's what they were fired for. Hair, hair, and, locks, locks. hair and locks and afros. No, 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 no. If, if somebody has a, like these brushes, and they like, look, man, you can't wear locks. That's not uh, systemic racism. There's, we have a code. Well, if you want to wrestle... That? Don't you realize that it's the, it's the, about school's black code, fashion, it's the school's code or the job start your own business. You want people to wear black hair, start your own black business and hire those people. If I want a job and I say I want y'all to come in here in white shirts and gray slacks every day, I want to I want brown shoes and a black belt on. That's the uniform. Oh, come on, man. I, I can't have this. I, I don't like my, my belt and my shoes not matching. it. Bro, you got to find another job. I don't know what to tell you. This is the uniform. I might be weird, but that's, I'm paying you. I'm not paying you to come here and do something that I don't want to see. So even if it's ridiculous, even if I don't, I don't want to allow loud colors, you can't wear red. That's not the thing. That's I don't understand not racism. That's the choice of the employer. All of it's the choice of the employer. Okay, so let's let's all let's, let's agree that that every employer has the right to dictate whatever they want. I mean, we have shadism yeah. that works even in in African or Caribbean countries, yeah. where you have people who are light skin only who can do certain jobs, and we have that concept, and we know that it is the mindset of a particular. Uh, ideological approach for that company that they want a certain look. You have it in churches. You have certain churches. Mm. Uh, my my church my church background is very conservative. This would not be considered something a pastor, a bishop, or a minister would could even wear. Mm. So we have that. We have the bias of 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 choice of opinion of perspective of individuals in charge and control. And I don't think we should intermingle them completely in a conversation of systemic. Um, racism, because systemic racism is much bigger than will you fire or hire an individual based on how they look. Systemic racism well, yeah. is, 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 on a, is on a level where I say it starts on a nationalistic level. It doesn't start from the bottom. It starts from the top. And, and if I was creating, for example, if I was creating a nation, myself, me, I was creating a nation the first thing that I would want to make sure about my nation would that be everybody who is related to me stays in charge after I'm gone. And I would create systems to make sure and thought processes to make sure that I... Why do you say that? Why? why if, if, are you saying that you would be, the nation you would be creating would be a, a republic or a democratic republic? It would be a nation after me. Because you just said, if I'm an employer, I can employ who I want. I can make you look like, wear like, do what I want. So if I'm creating a nation, well, I can no, well, no, 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 no. How I I'm not, want. But I'm it. not saying that. I, I'm not saying an employer. Uh, that I'm using, it, I'm an using employer. It as a narrative analogy, as a parallel analogy. Yeah. If I'm creating a nation, uh, me. I'm creating a nation. I'm going to say I'm going to create a nation for my children, for my family. I'm going to make sure that we have control, that nobody can take this nation away from us. But, from the macrocosmic level to the microcosmic level of creating a company to creating a church to create you, wouldn't hire, you wouldn't only hire your family members. I'm going to make sure that the rights, the control, 
of that which came out of my mind, my ingenuity is maintained within my control. If me and Stokes got together and said, Stokes, let's form a business, we are going to make sure that the business will be beneficial to us, to our families, to our descendants. We are going to put things in place to make sure that it has legacy capacity. This is what the nation, the corporation, the idea of America is. It has been built by a select few to benefit those individuals who formed your formation documents, who formed your institutions, who formed your idealism. The evidence of that, and it was not I, created for individuals outside of their group. But now there's the evidence of that. who are now having to deal with being part of something that was not formed for them. And that's what his system is. That's, that, 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 that's not true, though. <laughs> that's just not true. It's not. It's not true that uh, that that the United States of America was created to be an oligarchy. It could have been. They didn't have to write the Constitution the way they did. So I'm just I'm saying that all of that position and that that entire orientation that the United States was founded. Uh, uh, was founded on oppression and by, and it was founded by a small group of people to only benefit those group of people in the perpetuity. Like, that's not true. It's, it's just not true at all. In fact, when it was founded, it was on the trajectory away from oligarchy, away from monarchy. And it was bringing into the world this uh, a relatively fresh idea because prior to the United States of America, uh, what we what we call democracy has not been done this way. It has not. All these people who are crying about Why are you calling being it a, you had not. Well, you I'm people that look like me had nothing to do with it. And guess I, what? But, democracy doesn't. Well, work. no, it, no, no, it doesn't no, work that, everywhere. That I disagree. Well, no, I I disagree with that. But I also um, I study various histories. So from my perspective, the United States of America wouldn't have been founded without uh, indigenous uh, indigenous nations here, uh, without Moorish nation, the uh, Moors here. So, but I don't really want to go down the path of all of that. But I, I can I can just reduce the term "we" to a, a nationalistic stance. I'm a resident of the Commonwealth Patriot, of Pennsylvania. This extends a patriot. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm a state citizen. I, I'm I'm a citizen of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We are a member of the United States of America, that confederation. So, you know, I that's it. That's that's what I am. I'm, I'm uh proud, and I'd rather be here than anywhere else in the world. I think because you don't know. What else you could get anywhere else in the world, though? That's a very, I, I mean, that's, they, a state, that's a that's a very subjective statement. Like it you, is. you, you it have is. no idea the advantages you could have in other areas of the world potentially right now. I mean, that's that's true, but there are areas where where we say, you know, uh, I don't th take you marry right. I didn't hear because if you marry, you're right. not going to say to your wife, even if it's you know it may or may not be true. But it it doesn't even you can't even really make real in your mind that if I was somewhere else, uh, I would be better off. So I take that type of position, uh, and and I really think a citizen ought to have that type of relationship. Um, that I guess go, kind of going back to that Kennedy thing because it really seems like most citizens have this idea that uh like did America support like America is some big fat person sitting up on a hill with gifts and that's supposed to just be giving out stuff and doing stuff with people rather than thinking what am I even contributing every day to get this stuff that I'm demanding. You got well, people left and right the mindset because I don't see myself as a citizen of Canada only. I'm a global citizen. I can live anywhere on the planet. I can work anywhere on the planet. I was born in Canada. Yeah, but I'm I was in America. Trust. I'm living. I'm living currently in Canada. But I can. I can put my money on a credit card and fly to anywhere in the world. I can seek.
to be get a job. I, I'm a global citizen. And so I don't think and, and, I, and I'm forgive me because this is not meant to be an insult. It is not meant to be an insult. But my experience. No, no, I, you get your mail you somewhere. It's really my point. You get your mail somewhere. That's that's yeah, what I'm talking. That's about. where I am. But but I'm saying. No, no, no. And, I, and I, I but that's all I'm it. talking about. But I'm, I'm not really talking about point. the mentality. It's I'm not, not talking about mentality. mentality. I, I, it is, actually, it is a mentality. And this is what I want to say. Yeah. My experience dealing with American, the American, the American black experience has been, um, I, have, I have noticed a very territorial mindset about the place they currently live. It, it's seemingly like the American black experience is almost like you are marooned on this rock of America and you do not see the world bigger than your own country. And I, and I think that's a very, I think it's a very sad experience because there are much more um, opportunities than just saying I can be in America. I had one person tell me, "Well, why?" why, well, that, why I, I, but I'm not saying that. To that, that's not what I'm saying. I, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that again, this is with all the places that I had not been. I am proud to be an American, uh, a citizen. Of the United States of America, to say I, it. I, you I know, you're you're in North America. In the way so I don't want to, for a black man to say, no. "I am proud to be a citizen no, of no, the United no. States of America," is is an incredible statement to me. I mean, it, well, it, 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 it may be, but you know how you were treated, but, and and now to say, but I wasn't. I wasn't. I'm proud to be a citizen. To me, no, no, no. But listen, listen, listen. Your eyes, you have to, you have to close your ears, and you have to not look at your past to say no. that sentence. But listen, you you I, I'm I'm more asking you to open your eyes and open your ears to me here and now and what I'm saying. Because all of the stuff that you're talking about, which I recognize happened, did not happen to me. So I don't I don't have to walk around uh, only claiming pain. From the past, I don't even understand what benefit could be gained from walking around claiming pain from the past. So In a microcosmic on. view, even if something happened to me yeah. as a child, let me ask you a question. If, if I, well, let me finish this no, one, finish more, one point yeah. because. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just kind of segue right off of you. If I was to run the Stokes, I'm a, you know, I'm one of his students, and I tell him some trauma happened to me at some time early in my life, he might give me advice on how to do it. If I come back to Stokes 10 years later, I done graduated high school, and I done graduated college, I come back to him 10 years later, at a certain point, Stokes is going to say to me, Toshan, you a grown man now, I've been knowing you since you was a young boy, and I understand you had this trauma. I understand that, brother, but you need to get up every day. You got a, you got two babies now. You got this and you got that. You got so I'm not I'm not walking around acting like I got a noose around my neck because I don't. I've never been the, the worst treatment I've received in this country is from black people. I don't know what racism is, and most black people don't know what racism is either. What they do know is what we know speeches, we know TV, we know roots, we know uh, BET and Black History Month, we know what Oprah's Day, we know what Black Twitter's talking about, we know what uh, what what we know when Roland Martin uh, Roland Martin gets sassy with somebody or Maxine Waters go and she uh, uh, doing her little thing like that's what we know. And how can you, bro, how can you experience racism when you have basically mar marooned yourself in your own community, surrounded yourself by only people that look like but you, I, but and, I had and done refused it. to engage in other, that's, you. so I'm, to say that I've only, I've never experienced racism in America. I'm talking about me. Me, I, know, I'm I have not. I'm talking about you. You, you, you I've never experienced so racism you, so in America. You, this but that's not, so me. that's not me, but that's not me. No, I've, me I've never I'm only lived. Tell me if I'm right. Tell me if I'm right. You said I've never experienced racism in America. The worst treatment I've received in America was by other black people. There's only two scenarios I can come from that. One by one is what I said initially. You have now put most of your experience around black people and have not 
um, communicated per se with other people of other races, or or you have equally participated in in areas with black people as with white people and have found that amongst white people you have more advantage you have more access you you, you have more benefits around white folks than you do around black people or people of other ethnicities and that black people for you have been the personal oppressive scenario or negative scenarios of your american experience there's only one of those I, no 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 uh, they're they're both inaccurate uh, i guess one more wildly than the other so I, I've certainly lived in different places. Um, I've, you know, I, have, I didn't go to a, a black school, uh, you know, elementary school. I went to a black school and then Morehouse was a black school. Um, but other than that, I, I guess you might consider where I was. A, it was a magnet school, so you might call it a white school, but it wasn't a white school. Um, so, so I'm gonna ask you a question on that too, bro. I, something just came to my mind when I asked you. Um, well, I, go ahead, jump in. Yeah, I, 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 I do believe our environment shape us, and I know you grew up in our in our beliefs in a very strict setting, right? Um, very conservative. Well, don't forget about that revolutionary I was telling you about. Okay. So that was you know 17. I was. Uh, sitting listening to Geno Jennings three, four days a week. By 19, I was ready to pick up the gun and run in the city hall, start the revolution. So th that was the way my environment shaped me. That's when I was still subject to my environment. And you're around Just black going people. where the winds were blowing. Say that again. And you were around predominantly black people. That ideology, that experience, the education was shaped around in a black environment. No, no, no. Um, the, all about, the black people thought I was crazy too. Right. Well, Honestly, well, 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 what about this? So because like, black people weren't woke back. What in in 1999, 2000, this woke stuff was not going. Yeah. But, so, but growing up. And I, and I think it's a really good point here, though. I, I really do. Growing up, and we know the ways of holiness, growing up in a very strict environment because we're very conservative, could that have impacted your worldview on how you see race? And because if you... if, if when not, you, not now, it did. It did, yeah, though, it right? 100%. Like, yeah. that's, that's why... I gravitate. That's why when I heard Minister Farrakhan say it quickened me. And that's what really pulled me in that direction. That's when I really started to get into uh, revolutionary ideology um, and, and kind of know more than just the autobiography of Malcolm X and makes me want to holler and monster. Or, you know, I was, I was reading, reading. And um, but that was the product of but what was put into my head as I was growing up. But can I say so, this though? Do you see how he has saying that his revolutionary mindset didn't come from conservative Christianity? Because I believe conservative Christianity. No, no, it did. Never no, built. no. I'm I'm just well, a whole different point. I'm saying conservative Christianity was never built to, to handle racism. Conservative Christianity, um, and, and I and and as much as I, I admire and when we'll never um, say anything negative about Dr. Martin Luther King, his approach didn't work. His approach I agree. was not built to turn systemic racism. It was, it was, his approach was essentially built to highlight what racism <laughs> was and to be a target of it. It wasn't built to change it. And so the church, and I think this was one of your second points, does, is the church silent towards race I, and i and i will not say that the church is silent speaking on behest of, of the the church um a, as a whole but i will say the church was not designed to deal with race it was not designed to to be an advocacy um forum for the specific scenario of systematic racism because systematic racism is a very new and a very young thing um, in respect to the full tapestry of the world, it is it is a very is a very intensified, specific bias 
that can't last for long. It can't last forever because it's not it's not rational. But the, so the church in itself is not necessarily built to deal with it specifically. The, the church is built to deal with sin, of which system, systemic and systematic racism are some of the small droppings of sin. And so um, this is why I think the church takes a more utopian view when it comes to social justice because the church is now speaking of more things than systemic racism. And, and this is why pastors are, are, are ill-equipped to deal with systemic racism in America specifically, in places of the Western hemisphere specifically, because we, don't think the church has never been produced to even deal with that properly. I you don't like think I, that I, the, I, I, I mean, I, I would say the absolute opposite. Mm. It seems like it's to me. It's not an accident that uh, Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and Louis Farrakhan are the main vestiges of. And none of them you know, represent the church. None of them. Well, Far Farrakhan, we know. I mean, not, Jesse no, Jackson that's, is closer than Al Sharpton, but I, Al Sharpton is is as much a reverend as Bugs Bunny. The Christian pastor is, 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 but, is, is yeah, but, but we can't qualify it, that. So on, on paper, he is. He's Reverend Al. If you say Reverend Al, everybody know who I'm not. I don't. I don't like the man. I'm just saying that is. I have, no, I have no issue with the man, but the man is the man is not a Christian preacher at whatsoever. You know, well, Justin no. Jackson also. Has has a lot to say in respect to re to re demonstrating himself as a minister of the gospel. It would be very difficult, and we know where Farrakhan sits in that position. Those people, no, but, even though even if I give Jesse and if I give Al the benefit of the doubt, they absolutely do not represent the Christian ethos in respect to Christianity. There, yeah. I would not say, oh, what does Jesse what does Jesse believe in the Christology of Christ? I know. I, I, you, you wouldn't, but but what I'm saying is, that I'm only saying that you know that there are a good fifty million people, let's say, who at first thought say, "Oh yeah, Al Sharpton, that Christian guy." That, that, that guy proves my yeah, point. That's all I'm saying. That proves my point. The the entire no, 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 no. I, I'm not arguing. I, America uses three guys when it comes I to know. racial I, issues. I, Al Sharpton yes, shows yes. up for every dead person, every I, dead black person. The only that's why I don't even, that's happened. why I don't really that proves my I, point. I understand what which perplexes me. I, I really don't understand why you don't fully agree with me. I, I don't get it. Um, but I'm gonna keep working. But see, but see, and, and, and that was my point about our our worldviews and 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 part partly of how we grew up because I think the church has taken and because of our belief systems we have a more passive passive role when it comes to these issues yeah. if, if, if you're taught for years strict holiness there's a separation between what's happening in the world and what's happening in quote unquote the church and so well, most people are not people, into right, that strict right, holiness though right right most people are not but those of us that have been i can understand the conservative view because we isolate ourselves from the bigger world and we see it through this lenses. We, so this view that I so, have now did not come from that. I'm trying to make that clear. Yeah, but, but it uh, did not come the from church, that. The revivalist movement, the revivalist movement that handed over their doctrines uh, to the Pentecostal church, they were, they were white people preaching that. So they never mm -hmm. had an, they never had to deal with the concept of social justice. Their issue wasn't social justice. Okay, those 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 men who came to hand over Methodism and to hand over the uh, 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 the, the the Protestant revivalist faith onto black people, they were not dealing with social justice for the most part. What took place was because of the Great Awakening, white people developed guilt. The abolitionist movement was mostly guilt. Before it became political, it was just guilt. Should we continue to enslave these people? Is this wait, 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 wait. See, okay. So, I, and we, we just keep piling these things on. 
So let let me just pick at that right there. That thing. I would take the position that no abolitionists were guilty because there probably were no slave holding abolitionists. So uh, all your abolitionists themselves, the individuals, probably, you know, it might have been one one or two. We have, lots, in there. We have lots of abolitionists who are ex-slave holders, my brother. Even the gentleman who wrote the song Amazing Grace, even Ulysses S. Grant, the Confederate general who fought, no. sorry, the Northern general who fought, he was an ex-slaveholder. Many abolitionists were individuals who owned slaves and because of their guilt, they 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 surrendered their slaves. They freed their slaves. So it, it wasn't. It, it was guilt. It's not oh, okay. So, uh, okay, I I'll concede that some of them had to be guilty. Just just to just to say we want cast dice on uh on on uh human behavior. Mm -hmm. So we get it. But there were. That there's no way that we could even believe that that that's the governing narrative of abolitionism. But even if it was, even if they were all stone cold uh, slave whipping drivers that just I mean squeezed the blood out of them. Even if that was the case, and I don't know. I really don't know what difference it would make on now, on today, on like it's. It's not. I'm still. I'm still waiting for a a concrete phenomenon or office or object or department, something where we can say, okay, right there. That's a systemic racism. You have you. You don't have to go any further than your than your president. <laughs> Why? You I just, totally disagree you with this. But I totally you can just okay, what, okay so, so what brother you can see how he's totally the coronavirus you can see how he's we, we already virus. know hold on hold on hold on one, one at a time y'all can't hear everybody well i'm just i, I don't want to get on trump because i i don't agree with that i'm but on that's, that I'm conversation on is i'm gonna stay on i'm gonna stay on okay. trump because because you don't have to go any further to, to but he's not he's to not racist and who says there are some good people out there there are some bad people and some good people on both sides talking about when when racists run over black people. You that's know, not what happened. That's, you, that, that's not the proper context. A black man being killed and never not, makes a mention of his. He comes and does a press conference on China when this whole nation is blowing up with cities going crazy. No, no, no. You don't have to go any further. Than the individual oh, about thing. which oh, yeah. about which black man they got killed. We're talking about when George Floyd got killed. Pre Trump's first statement to the nation so, that, was about China. He never had a press if, conference about yeah. the issues with policing. He never had a press conference about the killing of Floyd. He never somebody had a mentioned press somebody so, somebody mentioned uh, uh, that the red lining. And, and yeah, I, I spoke about redlining earlier. Yeah, yeah right? but I just, I, I mean, I, I really would love to get back to that. But then, because that's but this, it's not this is where it is. It starts at systemic racism, doesn't start from the bottom. Okay, it so, so let, let's not do this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is the, the rest of what I was going to say about the Trump thing is that, and we don't have to abandon it now, but if we're saying the systemic racism exists, uh, exists, then it existed in 2010. It existed in 2008 when Barack Obama. So let's get off of yes, Trump. Let's pretend. Exist, okay. So, that. so point to something in 2008 that's not Donald Trump that you can say this here is systemic racism, a phenomenon, a, a department, a, a state, a, a county, a municipal code, just something, a, a water fountain. A water fountain with a colored only sign. That's something that I could point to and say, okay, look, right there is a thing. And this is what I think you're not understanding. Systemic means everything is rotten from the core. No, no, no. I know what it means. I know I'm not insulting your intelligence. I'm saying that what no, you're, no, you're I, trying to do is you're I'm trying to but it's imaginary. I'm saying that you're making it up. 
I'm saying that you and everybody who's using that terminology is making it up because none of y'all can talk about a real thing. You can brother, only talk about it in a terrorist terms. organization in America. Is the KKK a terrorist organization in the United States of America today? Is it? Is it? It is not. No. It is it's not. not. Okay. Right. No, it's, I agree. But it's, it's what the Black Panthers called a terrorist organization in the 60s. It was. So was come the on, Black Panther Party a terrorist organization, organization in the 60s? Pardon me? I didn't in, hear Philadelphia, in, in Philadelphia, the Black Panther Party was shooting at the police station. They're going to call them terrorists. Whether you agree with them or disagree, if they shoot at the police station, they're going to be called terrorists. Okay, and so fine. So let's say they shot at the police station. Let's let's agree. Let's 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 say, and I don't believe they are. I don't believe the Black Panthers are a terrorist organization. But I'm gonna say no, this, this argument. Let's say the Black Panthers. Let's say the Nation of Islam. Okay. Let's say both of those organizations are terrorist organizations. Let's say that America has decided that those two organizations are terrorist organizations. Is the KKK a terrorist organization? And by comparison, in your opinion, I mean by. By comparison, yes, by comparison, yeah, then, yeah, absolutely. So why I mean, if, if you, why isn't the KKK considered a terrorist organization in America? The today? KKK Tell me why. is considered a terrorist organization. No, if, it is not you, a terrorist organization in the United States. That's not not true. Go to terrorist right organization. Now, in the United States. The KKK, people still talk about racism in America, and the first boogeyman they'll bring up is the KKK. I'm, I see Twitter every single day. I try to stay away from Facebook. I try to stay away from Instagram. I get pulled to Twitter at least one time a day. People are talking about the Ku Klux Klan every single day. Yes, you can, uh, Angela Rye. When Clinton Charlotte. ran for president, when Clinton ran for president, who is David Duke? Who is David uh, Duke uh, also running for president? He was the head. Uh, of the David Duke KKK. is one one of the one of the extremely few Republican KKK members. Okay, which is why so David, David Duke, Duke is put up the because the KKK in America, is largely a Democratic Party of... organization. You think is the think... Democrat Party a terrorist organization? Is the Democ the United States of the of America is a terrorist organization, my brother? No, uh, yeah, well, I, and you I, are a victim I, of its I, I terrorism, it. and you are a victim of its I, terrorism. Your descendants. I, I mean, if I'm, a, I mean, it is I'm the most victim. terrorist organization on the in the history of the world. It is the only organization that's dropped two atomic bombs on other nations. It is the it is the last organization out of slavery. It is the only organization that still has um, whoa, 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 um, but just for people who may be coming in and they're viewing this, you know, um, on what we're talking about tonight. So we're talking about running behind and we're talking about how uh, uh, running the race from behind. Running running the race the race, from behind. There you go. Running the race from behind and where we've been historically and where we are presently, and where we're going and dealing with all those nuances of racism. Um, and also just unpacking that idea of racism. We have uh, Brother Tosh on. I don't really believe that the word racism is a real thing. Systemic. I think systemic is what he, to be fair, I don't think. Or is he, it both? Well. Oh, both. Uh, okay. Now. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for making that distinction. Yes, sir. I, I am, I am presently taking the position mm -hmm. that systemic racism does not exist. Right. Right. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. However, in America, in America, well, you can only address America. You can't address any other system. That's a well, system so it, that's for part two. <laughs> okay. Part two is that's good. <laughs> I don't believe that racism is real. Nobody hates uh, man, anybody. A man word. <laughs> so, so Toshon, when I hear you, when I, when I really hear you saying I, I, I just, you believe that racism just, is. 
racism. I heard the music not... in the Twilight Zone playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so racism is not is, is a made up word. I just want to make sure that we understand is is a is a maybe a political word that's been made up. And yes. um, from what I hear you saying, a lot of us African Americans, um, we have this idea of the black card. Or uh, mm-hmm. what you would call, um, what do you call that? The, the, the black card. We 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 victimize. So yeah, I'm here. You saying like more this argument? Hey, the race card. The race card. Yes, the race card. Like, and every time something happens, uh, we pull Americans the race or card black, card. black and brown people want to pull up the idea that hey, it's because I'm black, right? Yeah. It's because I'm black, as opposed to no, it's because maybe you're lazy. Maybe it's because you don't want to get an. Maybe you committed a crime. crime. That's why that police yeah. officer had to choke you and kill Absolutely. you. What, 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 why are you running away? You right. know, you got no business running away. You should have let that man give you a ticket. That's why he had to kill you because you're running away because he's giving you a ticket. He had to choke you because you're selling cigarettes. How dare you sell cigarettes? He had to choke the life out of you. You know, you had no business out there selling cigarettes, Negro. You know better than that. <laughs> I won't argue that, that Ooh, Lord, what has happened has happened. Right. But I also know <laughs> that, you know, for as long as I've been alive, it's Eric Gardner selling Lucy's all, I mean, they get, it's people getting away with it every day. So you get a bad cop to run up on somebody selling Lucy's and it goes bad. I, but I mean, what, how, how many Are times they racist going, Would you call them racist huh? cops? Or, or I guess you would call them. I mean, I wouldn't call them racist. You would say this is hate. So what, what, people, definition do, it, what definition do you give it, Toshan? Just so that people are clear, your definition yeah. of it would be what? That's just that's just, just bad. Well, my definition of what, though? Of what? Uh, uh, so what we will call racism. Like, but hold on. Before you answer, it's to be, to well, be I'm clear. I'm saying that you're not really talking about a thing. That's what I'm not. That's why I but I'm, I'm going to be fair to you, Toshan. Eric Gardner was killed in the presence of, of multiple black officers watching him be killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So this is yeah. proof, this is this is proof that systemic racism is not always something that is the 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 overt prejudice of the individual who is there. It is a system okay. whereby How those officers this? felt those black officers felt that I can't even I can't even stop this because what Let's... I belong to is stronger than the connection I have to my brother who is there being choked. That's, to but that's that's only if you're right. See, let's let's say I'm gonna try to run through this real fast because sometimes I get if I get long winded, just cut me off. Let's say that there's a like a an ideology or belief system that says that that is like a, a magic evil wizard. That's kind of like the devil, and he makes people do bad things. And and then you look at that situation and you say, look, I told y'all, I, I told y'all that the wizard make that if you get in the presence of somebody that's possessed by and being used by that wizard, that uh, that you won't be able to intervene. Look, that's proof right there. That's proof that this that this wizard cast a spell and was possessing that guy because the cops didn't intervene. It could be taken as evidence if everybody around the table already believes in that wizard. And I don't know what would make them believe in it, but I would imagine that something would lynching make them believe Lynching black people, it. photographs of white okay, people lynching right. so mass now, lynching. Okay, so, okay. so now it's easier, to, <laughs> it's easier to talk about. But no, who's lynching black people today? Seven black people have been found committing suicide by hanging themselves. You know, I, okay. black, that's but what if, we do, if, you know. If, when I get okay. depressed, so let's say, people get depressed, they put nooses on their necks and they think about hanging themselves. They do. No, no, <laughs> what, I don't, you, working working in an urban school right. for five years, you'll see. You will see. See what? It happens a lot. Um, but the, even if four of them were lynched by roving bands of white men, seven people probably going to get shot by the end, by the end of today in Philly. Huh. 
if they don't get shot today, this weekend, you could easily get seven people. And now maybe the shooting is successful, maybe okay. it's unsuccessful. So, so let me say this. But we, How we that kill. Happen in Norway. We, Why doesn't that happen say in that Norway? Again. So we go to Norway. We go to a ghetto in Norway, right? And Norway, uh, the police have shot in Norway six people since 2010, I believe. Six completely people have been shot since 2010. Okay? They probably cooperate with the police in Norway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I don't, I've never had a, no, I've you never really had a, that. They have you good white folks. Oh, I, white folks I'm cooperate. Only, I'm Those criminals in Norway cooperate with their police because uh, we've got, I mean, it's they've, not, got more, they've got more cooperative uh, criminals in Norway than we got in America. Look, bro, look, it's not you can't know, man. You have to look at it. You have to. Bro, look when I was I, when I was Ubering, nah, man, I don't buy none of that stuff, man. I was Ubering a few months ago. I'm downtown. I make this illegal turn mm -hmm. right in front of the cop. I ain't really realized it was illegal, but I kind of knew it was sketchy. Pulled me right up. I walk up to, he walks up to the car. I got my license out. I ain't, yes, sir. Huh, how you doing, sir? That, I'm not doing that. I got my license out. Bro, you you want to get on with your day? I want to get on with my day. I'm out here trying to get this money. You trying to get this money. He like, oh, you got your license out already. That's the first thing he said to me. He's uh, like, sorry to say something. He was like, oh, you got your license out already. I was like, yeah. Uh, like I, I think I got my uh I had my um my registration thing in my little bag that I drive with. So I'm like, uh I, I had my registration in my bag under my seat. So I want to get my bag, um, but I don't want to just reach under there. So then he repeated that to me. He said, You want to reach under your seat to get your bag, to get your registration? I was like, Yeah, I'm driving Uber, I just keep everything under there so it's easy for me to grab. She's so like, All right. Now, in my mind, and I don't feel like, like, oh, you being less than a man. I know what this dude got to deal with. This is Philly, bro. I'm about to reach under my seat. I'm, I'm, I got to get there to get what you want, but I know what you got to deal with. So let me deal with you like a human being, and let's just try to get through this thing, and we both get on with our day. All he told me at the end of that, and I'm telling you I did the wrong thing, he like, man, you got to pay attention to them signs. Like, yeah, man, you know, I'm, I'm thinking I'm getting out of everybody's way. I was trying to get out your way. I thought you might be like, no, nah, man, you know, you, you out here, especially you out here Ubering. You got to pay attention to them. All right, cool. We good? Yeah, we good. Go ahead. That's it. That's it. And that's what will happen most times. I don't know how many times I've been in a city where as soon as the cop come up, oh, what this mom one here? Look at this one. You pig mom. All that. We know we do that. Not me, but our well, can people. I speak as a person who was a cop for 13 years? I pulled over black people. I walked up to the car, and black folks said to me, "You only pulled me over because I'm black." So I we understand. Did you? No, it was dark. I didn't see him. I couldn't even tell right. you. Right. Right. But but we right. understand that there is an exculpatory mentality and expression that takes place in North America with black people and their experience with the police. Let me fast forward this to now going to Africa, to going to Ghana and getting pulled over by the police officer in Ghana. The Ghana police officer, is, he's black, I'm black. When he pulls me over, he has an expectation. He has an expectation that I'm going to give him a tip. It's not a bribe in Africa, it's called a tip. <laughs> he has an expectation I'm going to give him a little tip and I'm going to and, and then he's going to allow me to go my way. Every culture has an experience with the police culture of the culture, period. The difference right. in America is that the police cultural experience for black people causes us to end up dead. That but is it the really difference. doesn't. But it doesn't. It, that's, it's not true. That's, that's just what's sensationalized. But okay. by well, and large, it causes you... us to end up dead more than people who are of other ethnicities. And you know what? But Toshua, that's not Toshua, true. Toshua, but Toshua, 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 Toshua. Right, but yes, to add yes. to that, okay. Going, now, well, okay, maybe, that well, maybe is true. listen, this, is true, but black people commit more crime per capita. Well, hold on, hold on. We hold may on. not want to admit not that, true. but not yes, true. it is not true. If you are if you are policing an area, I'm looking at you, 
If I'm looking at you 24 seven and never take my eyes off you, and I'm not looking at the man over there who's doing the same thing you're doing, then I'm going to catch you more than I catch him. So no. Yeah, but you know what? The cops wouldn't be in the, in these hoods looking if if they not shooting up the black. They hitting little kids. Tell me a little kid just, just got shot a couple of days ago. here. I think two little kids got shot in one day a couple of days ago here in just Philly. We're talking about. But you know what? So I, 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 I think I, that was Philly anyway. But so, Sean, I want to say this. I've heard people say this of, of um, you know, a white counterpart say this too. A lot of times they, they react to blacks in a fearful way. Because it's been embedded in them about blacks, which is like this implicit bias. So when there are just blacks and there's a black person that that looks suspicious, they react sometimes in a way that becomes detrimental. No, no, I, no. I, I honestly don't. You would have to show me now again. I'm not saying no, no, as in zero. But but that's not. That one time, like you might have somebody, but one time is too many. That's ridiculous. Right. But, we, I, we I, live. but, I, but at the same time, I think what we're saying is very subjective here, right? Because here's the thing. You can never say all, you never say, you can say some or whatever the case may be. I personally do believe that there are some people who are racist. I do believe there are some white people who have made- What do you mean when you say racist? When I say racist, I mean- Culturally, because I am who I am, I'm privileged. And so I have a up in life over you. Wait, you talking about you Stokes or? No, no, he's defining racism. Okay. For the position okay, okay. of a white person. Right. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Okay. I believe. Right, go ahead. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. So because I am okay. privileged and that's how I was brought up, I, I even have within me an implicit bias. I may not want to be racist, right? I may not come out and say, yes, I'm racist, as I, but there's certain things that I may do. Like, if I have to prove that I'm not racist, that's racist within itself. But I, I don't think that's a great definition. Racism is the pre- No, I, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that's the definition. I'm saying this is my experience from what I, just talking to other people who don't want to be that. Oh, these are comments on the Bible. But, yeah, but because that's how okay. they grew up, there's this tendency to have these reactions that are based off of race racism and some I get the idea i get the idea that this is pastor I'm, I'm a, comment there actually too F, who's that? this is pastor clarence um clarence stevens who's actually okay made. pastor clarence stevens says i had good experiences with cops but it doesn't mean racism doesn't exist he says three north carolina uh carolina Police officers cops Police. huh yeah three north carolina cops he says said cops oh, he cops, yeah. carolina okay. cops Fired for got fired for saying they wanted to shoot blacks. That was today. today. I saw that recorded. Okay. Oh, man, I, I can't wait listen, to listen, kill these and and listen, listen. Can't wait. I right. no no. Uh, okay, I get it. I'm not saying that those are good guys. They're hateful and they're wicked. But it's no different than if somebody on the corner is like, yo, yo. All I want to do today for real, bro. I just want to shoot a nigga. It's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. Nobody is going to say, oh, he's a racist. Get Black Lives Matter right here. No, he's being but see, that's a really, but, but see, Bishop Brayton, that, that is a really good point there. And and I, and I don't want to get into the, the A and the R. Right. And I've heard it I, like, uh -huh. right. I've heard it said before, though, too, by um someone I um, is close to me. I won't say their name right now. But it was said, well, black on black crime is different than white on black crime. And I think what they mean by that is 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 the result of the why, the why it happens. It's why exactly. What is the antecedent? What is the motivation for the crime? And evil is evil. Me killing another black man is based on some evil thought or evil predilection I have. Nobody white in person, power, white the police law. officer. Hmm? So, a, a, pardon me. I'm reading the comment. Oh, okay, nobody sorry. is empowered by the law to to kill anybody. But I mean, it, do, do you want them to do their job or not? Do we want the cops to have legal power or not? I don't. Th that's a question. I don't. <laughs> okay. I, don't. I, now, want, I want a police officer to be able to come to my window. All right. All right. And I step out of my car with my gun 
and he comes mm. with his gun, and we have a conversation. I want the same thing. I, I want, want the same I, thing. That's what I want. I don't want a scenario well, where I have to be like, officer, don't shoot no. me. Please listen to what... I don't want to have to rely on his good conscience, his good character, his good morality, his good ethics. No. I want to I want to be as equally as armed as him. Yeah. And and I, I think... Say, Brereton, you ran a red light. Like I said, I don't remember right. running a red light. You ran a red light back there. I got you on camera. You want me to show it to you? Yeah. I'm sure you can show it to me. Okay. Yep. You're right. I did run a red light. Give me your license. No problem. Here's my license. Give me a ticket. Okay. All right. You walk away. I'll walk away. See you in court. That's what I want. Right. That's what now, I want. And, if he can and come, that would be a, if he can meet me. That would be a beautiful thing, thing. But you, you, I presume you're a law abiding citizen. I presume I, I am, too, but I ain't but gonna, gonna tell you all the whole truth. truth. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you are enough of a law abiding citizen where you probably wouldn't create a problem. I wouldn't create a problem. I think Stokes, that's, that's your um, mic that's echoing. I, I, I think you, you okay. might have. So, so say the, that again. The reason. Us and more drugs in Beverly Hills and Compton. There's more drugs in Beverly Hills and Compton, but they know it's not that they know better than to go into Beverly Hills. Ain't nobody outside shooting up the block in Beverly Hills. So they're not getting caught in Beverly Hills. The cops are in the hood because they're making the block hot every day. That's, not, that's, that's why the cops go like this. CNN is not giving you news of shootings in Beverly Hills. CNN is giving you news of shooting in Compton. Okay. No. No. They're making movies. No. They're making movies. No. No. If Nipsey Hussle gets killed, okay, I'll concede. CNN wants you to think that ain't nobody shooting in Compton. That ain't nobody shooting. They're not shooting in Chicago. That's just a little social unrest. That's just a little. Uh, that's just the effects of white privilege Listen, and systemic man, the racism war, the war on That's drugs, what... which, which pastor clarence mentioned the war on drugs the whole concept of the 13th amendment was to make sure that we had a capacity a, co a, a concept to continue to put black men in positions of incarceration to utilize them the war on drugs years later was still stay out of jail. Sure so I said, stay that they out of jail. A labor force that was, was no. accessible through the prison system this is why judges are being put in jail for putting people. That's not manifestly for, true. For, for ridiculous long periods of time because they're black. Man, there's too much evidence in the United no, no, States. No, 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 no. Okay. Too Listen, much evidence again. in every area of the United no. States of America to prove, to prove no. beyond a reasonable doubt that systemic okay. racism exists, that systematic racism exists, no, no. and to not see it is to simply live in a bubble that does not exist in real in the real world. It, it, it's no, 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 no. Stokes, man, you're shaking your head the wrong way, bro. You're supposed to be doing this. You doing that? You, you... <laughs> right, no, no, I, so, 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 I, no, so, I, so. Here's the thing. <laughs> I, I believe I'm multicultural all day long, right? I believe in right and wrong. I believe in the principles of the Bible. I believe. There are people who play the victim card. I do believe that. Absolutely, um, there. Uh, We've done I, it. I, but right, but because just because that exists and uh, that nuance exists does not mean that racism doesn't exist. I mean, the fact of like, I'm, like, 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 I'm open. My job, like, like, even on my job, we actually like we're dealing with that issue right now, and this is black, white, and the majority white. We're yeah, but everybody's dealing. And we with have. And we and we have well, I would say everyone is filled with implicit biases. Yes, right. But okay, right? Well, like, okay, you know, okay, okay. I so can agree we, with that. Everybody has yes, implicit bias, and they're supposed to. Racism, is, human beings. racism though, is using my yeah. surprise to keep you down, to dehumanize okay. you, and right. To so give me, so you. give me an example. I, I okay. couldn't get through any of my sociology classes. With a clear answer from this, I I went through maybe uh, four sociology and psychology professors that I could not get. So give me that, and not not prejudice, which I have and I like to have. I'm going to keep exercising my prejudice, and everybody should exercise their prejudice. I'm going to exercise my bias. Uh, I segregate. I discriminate. 
I encourage everybody to discriminate. I encourage everybody to segregate at the right time. Notice, that, you're not, notice you're not using the word racially. So no, 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 no. I mean, I'm you're not well, saying racially. I don't, you're not saying racially discriminate. You're saying be discriminating. When you go buy a pair of well, shoes, no, you're no, gonna buy right. the best pair of shoes. When you go buy groceries, you're gonna buy the best groceries. When you're gonna just yes, live somewhere, I, but, I, but I would racially, I would racially be. But you're not well, saying look, discriminate. So let's make sure. So let, let me show you some of my racial prejudices. Okay. If if I got a hundred people in front of me and I need to build the app, and there's enough Asians in there, like my team is going to look more Asian than black. That might be wrong. I'm just gambling. Do you think Asian people could basically build? No, I don't. I don't think black. anything. I'm purely gambling. It's it's just it's just a judgment call. Okay. These are the, I'm just purely the numbers. I may happen to get all of the dumbest Chinese folks on this side, and they were standing right here in front of me, and I go and and because there's some black geniuses out here. I understand that. Well, that's a, that's an but I'm also saying, I'm saying you know, if I walk if I walk on the basketball court, I'm like, bro, I, I'm a I'm gonna holler at y'all later on when, when we meet up about that wireframe. But <laughs> I'm, looking I'm, no agent, you. So <laughs> I'm looking for you. Maybe one for the week, keep him out there. Like he he got a stroke, he can hit them. So you know, we probably need one uh for the threes. But other than that, I'm gonna discriminate. That's, I'm not, racial, racial, that's not racial bias, bro. That's implicit. That's implicit bias. That's, that's bias. Implicit bias. No, 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 no. No, but I'm saying I'm doing it on the basis of race. I think that on average, black black men play basketball better than anybody else on the planet. Mm -hmm. they, I think they rap better right. than anybody and, else. And on that the thought, planet. that thought, will cause some Asian child to die somewhere. No, it will not. It well, is no. Racism. It is a bias. But, but there's no thought that will make any child anywhere die. That will not deprive then, anybody of opportunity or access. That will just make well, an Asian guy sit on the bench in the YMCA a couple so of minutes you, longer than me. You, that's all that's so let me ask you. Well, no, no, no. But, but let me ask you this then. You don't think that there will be more Asians in the NFL or NBA if there were less black men? No. No. So who would be there? Who they'd pro it would probably be individual. It'd probably be more white guys there than Asian guys. I mean, yeah, that's probably I, right. I but I'm saying answer to that. No, 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 no. Us, but I don't okay, know. no. Probably more big old country white guy no. down, down from from the Midwest. Big old big old corn huskers down there playing in the NFL. Which I'm hoping that every black person in the Real NFL time. this season. See, I, hope, I pray that you sit okay. out. I pray that you sit out and let the whole world watch all those good corn-fed, good white fellas play football, and you brothers sit at home for the next four months and show the world the difference between having black people engaging in our major sports and the difference. What and, the and they and like. they have the freedom and they have the freedom to do that. Now there's some some here. That's the difference between prejudice and racism. A brother saying I want to kill a white on the corner is prejudice. But if a white says I want to kill blacks, now is it because blacks is plural and there's just one white on the corner? But see, this is the type of thinking that we're dealing with. There's absolutely no way that, that this can actually, and I don't mean any offense, Facebook user. Yeah, I, I, know, out there. I know, I know what you, his, his question was worded, his statement was worded. Um, not perfectly, but his position is, is essentially right when you move it up the ladder. When one white man who's sitting in the White House decides that he wants to make sure that he declares war on an entire okay, black race, he can create a law called the War on Drugs, and that one white man can make sure that black people are incarcerated, that black people are killed, that black people are policed, that black people are put in positions of inferiority, that one white individual can do that. You went into 2008. Well, what did Barack Obama do? Barack Obama really never exercised his ability to do what Donald Trump is doing, creating law by executive order. Barack never really did. Uh, like Donald Trump knows he can't pass any law. He knows he, no one's going to work with him. So he's passing ineffective, 
executive orders that really don't trickle down to become law. The governors of every particular state don't have to listen to him. He is doing photo op with executive orders that will never touch the common man for the most part. The only thing that he has the capacity to really do is create these federal issues where he has now shut down your borders. He has now told professionals that they can't come in. He has now told nurses, doctors, scientists that are not from America that they can't come in. So he can do things like that on a mass scale. But yes, one white man in America can do a whole lot of damage if he's sitting in the wrong chair. I, you know, I, I can appreciate your perspective. I, I just cannot agree. And I think there are certain, now I'm looking at Wikipedia may be wrong. I know that uh, academics don't love Wikipedia, but that's there. what comes up. For Barack Obama, it says, had 276 total executive orders, while Donald Trump, thus far, has 161. So definitely a, a higher rate. Because, you know, if Donald Trump, at this rate that Donald Trump is in here a total of eight years, uh, he will be above 276. But I mean, that's 276. So I don't, and, and for right now, Barack Obama does have more uh, executive um, orders. I, the power is there. I mean, I exercise it. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't really have an opinion about it. It's there. Um, I, I do think that there will be way less black people in jail if we didn't vote uh, for Democrats so heavily here in the U.S. But because know, police, 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 police officers care who's sitting in the White House when they shoot black people. I don't. When you hire a racist, when you hire a racist police force in a racist town or racist city and you hire individuals because of nepotism, when you hire individuals because of the good old boys club, it don't matter who's sitting in the White House, right? For black people, the municipal level is extremely important for you because the municipal levels in America, at least, they determine who are your mayors, who are your city councilors, who are your district attorneys, who are your chiefs of police sometimes, or your sheriffs. Those are important things for you. But on the mass scale of things, racism comes from the top down. And so, you know, from, from my perspective of what I see, and again, I'm not an individual who's never, I've never, who has never lived. I was educated in, in the United States of America. I have two, three other churches that I enter, enter uh, communion with in the United States of America. I go to the United States of America all the time. I'm, 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 it's right, it's a border place of where I live. So my experience is that the United States of America really is, is in a scenario where you are suffering. You are in a you are you you have Stockholm, the black people have Stockholm syndrome to the for the most part about what the effect of America has been on their worldview. And I think sometimes it's it's important for you guys to look outside of the scope of your neighborhood and to see really other countries, other nations where black people are running those places and see the differences to how you are policed, how you are managed, how your wealth is transferred, even in places like the United States I mean, of America based on other nations. I, I do totally, I totally agree with that statement, but I'm not, again, my political perspective is, is I understand history in a context of civilization. So even though I have, you know, I talk about politics a lot. I talk about it on my podcast and all, I don't, it's, to me, it, it is about civilization. It is a global uh, thousands of years of so really I don't even think we can talk about this issue not really without dealing with spans of time of uh, for like thousands of years or uh but I, I just I'm seeking to assure you that I'm not coming from an American uh again I wasn't I didn't I came here but I used to be over the I I used to think that every black person that disagreed with me when I was preaching on my soapbox had Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> I used to think that they all had amnesia or they were all deaf, dumb, you know, I would normally say deaf, dumb, and blind. That's that was my thing. So I get it. But what they're gonna I, say, what they're gonna say you in the sunken place now, brother. <laughs> I well, I mean, I know, 
but <laughs> well, but but it, but then if, if we get down and start pulling out them books and start pulling out that philosophy, is is gonna be hard to run a whole race with me. So, I, you know, I. It, it well, may take time. Point you brought up your good point. You brought up about Barack Obama. I had no idea he wrote that many um, executive orders. If that's actual true, actually true. Yeah. Um, and, but and Donald then, Trump. Donald Trump is making a photo op um, of of executive. I, I I I didn't see Barack sign so many executive orders, and I don't know what his executive orders were about. Well, and, and we know that they were not helping him create law at all. But Trump, it, seemingly, that's his that's his first move. His first move is let's create an executive. How do how can I get past Congress? What I can create an executive order? Let's do that all day. That man. Well, has <laughs> yeah, but but if you know that it, that a good portion of it is set up, you know there has never been a person in history. We didn't see Jeffrey Dahmer's and all types of crazy people. There has never been a time since television has been in existence. I'm sure where every single day, every hour of every day, there's some article, some statement, some pundit getting up, spreading their message about one man. Because so, there's never been a more divisive president in the United States of America since I don't believe that. racist Johnson sat down in that seat. He is the I, most I don't, divisive I don't, man who was I don't believe that in that seat in common in the 21st and 20th how come century? he wasn't that how come he wasn't that divisive back when he was the Donald running the apprentice he absolutely was when he was trying to put no, no, I, I mean, in parliament in central park those central park the central park boys when he was trying to kill them when he was trying to kill well, them, no he wasn't trying, no. For crime no, he wasn't them. trying to kill them i if you think somebody raped somebody in the park and you have the opinion that they should get the death penalty, that's on you. That's your opinion. What, uh -huh. I, I'm not going to take that away from you right. just because you happen to think that they're black. Right. If you think they're black and they deserve the death penalty, you have every right to think that. Because uh -huh. if I want to think they deserve the death penalty and they black or white, I'm sure I'm not going to stop because it's going to make somebody. But aside from the Central Park Five thing, there's literally – Nothing that anybody can point to before Donald Trump announced that he was, uh, well, you know, the birther. Black in people stop. I was, well, I was about to say, black people stop liking Donald Trump uh, because Donald Trump stopped or didn't like Barack Obama. But before that, Donald Trump was. I never heard Donald Trump called a racist. Like, I, was, never heard. I was going to school in New Jersey, right across the, the bridge. They didn't like Don from the from the central where, part. Uh, where at in New Jersey? I can sack New Jersey, Fairleigh Dickinson University. Okay. We okay. were we we didn't like Donald Trump from the time he started pointing his mouth at those boys. We knew where Donald Trump was coming from. So no, they can't well, yeah, tell me what y'all were black, black people in America never no. knew what the, the Donald was doing. All those all those individuals now, the Sharptons, the, the Jacksons, they were coming begging at his table. But everybody knew exactly what Donald Trump was about. And so, what? what but what did they? Do? Nah, they. That's not. <laughs> that's why the. That's why the Republicans went to get him. That's why the Republicans gave him. No, no, they didn't go get him because they fought him so Democrat. hard. He was a Democrat. He beat them. They didn't go get. They didn't go get Donald Trump. Donald right. Trump spent his own money. Okay. He beat all of them. So they didn't go get him. They did not want him to win. The Republicans didn't want Donald Trump to win. Democrats didn't want Donald Trump to win. And he still won. Okay. Like a beast. So he at least should get credit for that. I they didn't, him. he's not somebody, he didn't get put up into I, that position. I not. I'm, I'm not giving him racist credit for becoming the prime minister, the, the president well, of the most racist nation ever. I believe, I, I can't believe, give you credit for that. I, I, I believe in real. I believe, even though I might not agree with Trump and and or be a supporter of Trump, I may not be. I do believe all powers are ordained by God for whatever purpose that whatever president's put in place is supposed to usher in, mm -hmm. good or bad. L Lucifer was put in place by God too. Exactly my point. Well, and you, well, and I mean, <laughs> now to that end, I mean, and that's actually an idea I had about the religious aspect because that's a whole other thing that I don't really get with black people and why they're so hardcore 
on the racism thing because, like, if if this here is your guy, we talking about this guy here, not not that guy, not the fake guy. We talking about this guy here. If this guy is with us, who can be against us? Mm. So that really makes me that. I really don't get why that is not the position. To me, the church, the people who are truly believers, if you believe in a real God, man, you should be over here getting all the bread. You should be over here setting up the farms and the, and building houses and little towns, developing municipalities, uh, be, beginning a, a you know what we what we call a state in the private sense, but going on to statehood and then in the national sense. That's really what a a, a truly God fearing church would be doing. So I think that if there's any problem with what the church is doing, is they're not be, that they're buying into all of this uh, stuff about these wicked powers and all of these people that have the power to keep to keep God's people down, especially in the U.S. I don't know how blacks do in Canada, but especially I, 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 in the I, I, U.S. I realize God's people is only black people. I, I don't think. I think no, that's, no, no. Why, that's why you cannot put social justice and and Christianity. You can't. No, I know. Well, what I was, well, that's right. what I was about to say, though, about how because what I was going to say is in the United States of America, black people very often talk about. I'll just say ourselves as God's chosen people, special people. The way Hebrew Israelites think about that, that's the Hebrew Israelite mentality. No, I mean, and it is them. But I'm saying that that's that's very common. The woke wild. nation, the woke nation, woke nation. That exactly, yeah. and that that whole woke <laughs> thing. It, that's part of that. Doctrine. You can see part right of now, doctrine. most of the revolution happening right now in America. White people are helping black people. White Christians are ha holding hand in hand. Latino Christians, Asian Christians, Christians of all races and ethnicities, genders are holding hands, saying Black Lives Matter, and so. Social justice. As, but who's saying as, black lives don't matter? Racists. Who though? Racists, bro. Racists Who? are saying it. Who those though? Same, those same police officers that were just fired today are saying it. Donald Trump never said it. He doesn't believe black lives matter because he's never said it. Individuals who, who prescribe. I don't say it. I don't say it. Individuals who prescribe. Say it. Okay, well, you, you, you're, you're, you're a different demographic. Immigration, <laughs> individuals that prescribe to a Confederate flag, they don't say it. All right, but Candace Owens doesn't say it. But they uh, hold uh -oh. on, to uh -oh. Candace Owens don't say it. All right, the Hodge twins <laughs> don't say it. All right, they don't. Uh, 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 Anthony Brian Logan doesn't say it. Brian right. Tatum doesn't. Okay. Jesse Lee Peterson doesn't say it. Right, and got, and that so and all those those Confederates that don't say it say it for the reason that Jesse doesn't say it. Those KKK members that don't say it. They don't say it for the same reason that the Hodge twins don't say it. It's the same thing. It's not a different thing because their skin color, if anything, is racist. That's racist. But again, I don't believe in racism. But if I did believe in racism, I would say that that's racist. I think you do. I think I, you do. I, <laughs> no, that's what you do. The closest okay. I come to believing in racism. I'm going to do my Cuban Gooding Jr. Um, imitation from Boys in the Hood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to punch it. Just like, and hug me, man. Look just like him. Look just like him. <laughs> the, the, closest oh, I, no, I believe, the closest I believe in racism, I guess this just will make me sound worse, but the closest I believe is what we, what the type of thing we see in today where like I could go out in the street and just say cracker, cracker, cracker all up and down. I can say whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to look at me even. I mean, they probably literally would not even look at me. Mm -hmm. Probably get some amens in Philly. <laughs> I, you, you better believe I would. Uh, my homie King Sean Mayor, he used to be downtown all the time. And he would be, look at this uh, so-called black man walking with his white dog. And it's like, ain't nobody ever come up to him and be like, yo, bro, that's not like, so, but to me, right. if any, now again, I, 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 I he was talking about a dog, an actual dog. 
Well, I mean, he would be calling a white woman on a black man's arm, and not using not using oh. the word dog. Right, right, either. right. Um, but that's fine. And again, I you know I I that's do believe prejudice. in that's prejudice. I know I, you're that's prejudice. That's what that is. Now, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in, okay. so guess what he didn't do? He didn't grab that white woman and lynch her from a tree. Even if he did, it wouldn't be racism. Not in America, you're still right. wouldn't be racism. Not in America, you're right. Wouldn't be racism. And and if and you're right. In if America, if he racism. ripped off the mask and happened to be a white man and ripped off her mask and she happened to be a black woman, it still wouldn't be racism. That'd be racist. But but it's not. It's, that's just a word. Prejudice is real. We can describe it. We can act it out. We can talk it's about it. I can, I can give you an example. So it's not only a word. Bias is a word, but it's not limited to a word. I can give you an example of bias and and not even have a word. is prejudice, but all prejudice is not racism. Run but that. I don't... I, I get the equation, but that's only if it's real. But if racism... See, okay... This is my reason. I remember back when when I was um, first learning about racism, this term called structural racism, it was only in, in academic literature at that time. It's not something that would have trickled down and gotten to a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old. So I heard the term racism, but I had never heard the term institutional racism. And then I started hearing this term institutional racism, and then I started hearing people define racism, and they was like Ta-Nehisi uh, Ta Coates and others who say that, uh, Michelle Alexander and, and other people, who will say that racism is prejudice plus power. And I remember when, when we started doing that thing, that's back when I was still left. Mm -hmm. And we would say that, but actually that was systemic racism that we had already, we had a name for it. I hadn't really thought through racism like that, but I understood, well, you know, this is the general idea of racism and then this is the systemic thing. So it like, if racism is real, See, for instance, we, the way most people describe I mean, actual racism and is, systematic are different too. Well, now that's the thing. Yes, you're right about right. that. The systematic is the bias that is in place, right? I, I've, I I've can utilize the bias, my nepotism, and and my in my my fraternal circles to I've read that. A, a, a system of advantage. I've read that, but that's just academics making stuff up. And this is happening where you are. I, you know, I, I, if you got your ear to the street, probably even, yeah, I'm not in Canada, so I don't really know what's going on. But, you know, what's coming to me is that it's a whole lot of. Uh, well, we're just as racist. We're just as racist as America. If that's what you're well, going, that we're just as racist as America. Absolutely yeah. just as racist as America. We, we, are, we are more subtle with it. But we are absolutely just as racist as America. We have redlining here in Canada. Absolutely, but you have should it. have redlining. Banks are. I mean, I don't get. It. I don't understand that because my it's house, like, my house. In the, so you're saying we should have redlining because my house in my black community, of the same size, same dimension, same structure, is worse is worth less than the house three kilometers to that direction or three or very possibly six, two it depends. Miles that direction. But yes. Like yeah. Me. So uh, let me let me draw up a, a gross. I mean, an extreme example. You are at a lake. Point A, and I'm at point B, three miles away. You got lakefront property, and I'm renting the same size uh unit. Whatever. You got three bedroom house. I'm renting a three bedroom house over here, and I'm behind right. the factory and. Uh, the dogs come back here and there's a big parking lot. So it's like, yeah, it, it might happen because that's the marketplace. But I don't, there's nobody that's saying, turn down that good Negro money. No way. Yes, that's not what redlining is. So so let me use your yeah. example. Let me use your example. You've got lake lakefront property and I've got property way, way back in the bush, right? And mm -hmm. then somebody wants to buy my property. 
And so they go to the bank and the bank looks at their little map and says, oh, yeah, we don't lend money to that property. So oh, yes, then you go to the bank. next bank. Then you go to the next bank. The bank says the the bank, that bank has the same map. And you go to every bank and In you realize head. that that area they don't lend money to. And then you go to the neighborhood and you look around and you see the reason that they don't lend money isn't because it's in the bush. It's because everybody there looks like you. No, but but no, it is because it's in the bush. That's that's precisely why. Because if everybody there looked like you, but it was they they had uh they were called Jay Z and called Beyonce and called Kanye West, the people the banks would be like, oh, they'd be knocking people over to get to to the, they'd be snatching you out of banks to pull you to their bank. I don't because they know Jay Z and Beyonce. I don't need the bank to buy the property though. No, no, you don't. But my point is that if you are. Or, or anywhere close, you're Jay-Z's accountant and you live next door to Beyonce's hairdresser who lives next door and, and Beyonce hairdresser is just like, I want to keep getting this money. And, and uh, Kanye's barber is like, yeah, I want to keep getting this money too. So we ain't shooting up this block. We picking up our trash. We ain't had, we not arguing outside with our wives and beating our kids up and down the driveway. We going to act like we got some sense and we not giving anybody any reason to come up here and knock down our market values. We going to make people want to come here and buy our property. They going to want to open up businesses here because they want some of this good black money. What's going on in the hood? It's not just people walking around with brown skin. It's the fact that you can't let your little kids run up and down the street. That's the best point you've made. That's the best. Well, point every, everything but, I'm saying really but, is but, based but then, on that. But then this, is, this is what I have to say. You're saying to me that every lower ec economic community is a crime, a crime. Lower Every lower economic community that has a large population of black people in America is a crime community? Every... Now, so I'm gonna make this statement, and but the statement is gonna be like one two percent wrong. So just allow room for error with the statement. Okay. But in the United States of America, in Democrat-run urban cities, right, where there's no money, you will find crime. You will find crime at a much higher rate than any other type of uh demographically populated neighborhood like a, of a of enough of a different demographic where we might just call it that now again it's going to be exceptions you go into kensington and philly and you might walk down a whole block and not see any black people no puerto ricans just see all white people and they just as dirty as anything outside shooting up uh, they don't care so yeah they exist but th they are nowhere near as common as this this ghetto hood. And aside from the hoods, what's really far more pervasive is this is the culture that hood culture. That's really the problem. Like it's not a poor neighborhood per se. That's the problem because poor poor neighborhoods are just poor. You don't you don't. You know, it's not like if you walk down the street in a in a wealthy neighborhood that money is sticking to your shoe. It, the, the same stuff happens when you walk up. You don't block. need any black people to be there for it to be a hood, though. You got Latino. No, you don't. Right. No, I'm, or, I'm, you, or you, don't. you don't. But, but no, no, I mean you I mean, don't. You don't. But but when you do get black people together, uh oh. Uh -oh. You, you sure you I'm want to? Here it come. I know. I know. I you, see, you, you see me pause. Every time I pause, like that. Tell the truth. I dare you to finish. 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 Am I right? When you get black people together. Go ahead and finish that. Hear me? You won't be able to come outside in Philly. You finish that. I said, I'm right. He could have run soaky real good. Oh my God! Um, oh my Lord, Lord. Lord. At least eighty, ninety percent of the time, if you put if you black, black people, people together, together, put them together in the fifth grade classroom, mm. you're gonna have a problem. Put them together 
uh, uh, in 10, ten square blocks. blocks. You're gonna have a problem. Yeah. I think we're in 19. I think we're in. I think we're in 1905 right now, man. No, no, no. See, Ooh, in 1905, but see, in 1905, you wouldn't have that problem. Nobody was getting. You, your grandma wasn't getting. Right, nobody was beating old ladies in the head in 1905. Your grandma could walk from here to there, and at two, three o'clock in the morning, if she wanted, she might not be able to see, but she could walk and it'll be fine. Where, where if, if anything, in America, America, what cities can an old lady not walk down the street because these old jigaboo Negroes gonna just stick up Granny? Where, where, what cities are those? Tell me what <laughs> cities are. <those. laughs> Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Baltimore. Philadelphia, right now, right now they're saying, saying that your grandmother, grandmother can't, walk can't walk down the street, down the street in the city of brotherly love. Oh, man. Man. Certain places. When we get done this thing, certain places. Go to YouTube. Uh, it's this, uh, this dude, dude, dude that drives around, around the hood. He just drives, just drives around. around. Cameron, Cameron, you're, you're echoing for him. You got it. You got it. You got oh, it. Yeah. oh, that's me. Yeah. This this dude just drives around. You'll see. I'd, I'm telling you, there are some places where you literally would, you just be like, Grandma, you got to take care of that tomorrow. Like, you cannot leave out of the house because now you know what's going on out there. The Chinese store on the corner is still open. You know they out there hanging out. They're doing whatever. All the cars coming through. Grandma, you cannot, you can't go up to see Miss Valerie tonight. You got to do that tomorrow. In the daytime, I'll walk. No, that no, 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 that no, that part is true, um, Bishop. And and, and, and you, this you is Philadelphia. It's crazy, and it, it does get that way where it's like even our own, you know, black on black, whatever you want to call it, don't have respect for one another in Philly for sure. I mean, I, I'm not even gonna say it gets that way. That is what it is. In some places. And so what are they? Oh, what, yeah. They, I mean, they're, 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 they're not raping grandma. Let's establish what's happening. They're not raping her. They want her money. No, 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 no bro. They want her yes, money. They are. They're, they're, they're not doing it in large numbers, but yeah, they are. They want her yes. money, right? No. They, I mean, sometimes, sometimes they, rape. they rape. Well, sometimes, I haven't. I haven't. No. Well, I'm, I'm just. So, uh, hold on. No. I have not heard of. No, listen. I have not heard of. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I haven't heard of a grandmother being raped. I have West Philly. The last one I heard was in West Philly. Maybe. Yeah, pull that up. But what I'm saying is I do know black girls are raped all the time in Philly by black men. I do know that gang wars between one hood against the other, shooting and killing each other every day. That's every day in Philly. I do know there's bullets that are flying in the hood Hitting innocent grandmothers and babies because people are gang banging each other. I do know that happens in Philly, and that's a black on black crime thing that's going on. I do know yeah. that. Now, tell me, this, this is my question. My question. I, I don't have, I don't have, have, have I'll give you a comprehensive answer. Can something like that, if you threw enough money at it, if you threw enough money at it, would it stop? If I, if I made all of those gangs now, um, unions. And gave them an, an, a federal endorsement of funds, and I and I and I and I threw, I mean, I mean, trillions of dollars into that hood, and made those individuals now economically independent, no requirement to do anything on the corner. Would it curb the crime? No, I would have to say highly likely it would. Because what you're saying, no. that, you're saying no. So that means that these individuals are just, they're intense, they're depraved, they want to rape people, they want to kill people, they want to murder people. That's, that's basically what you're saying. They're, those individuals want to commit. Yeah, that is what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying everybody. Not all, saying few, enough. few. Yeah, few. Well, look, enough. I, I was, I've, I've taught, taught multiple degrees. degrees. One thing One that thing I learned, this is something that I hear a lot in these discussions. You're, you're, you're making them echo, echo. Um, something I hear a lot in these discussions is, well, that ain't most black people and that, most of this. And like, I get it. Mm -hmm. But what, what I learned from teaching in a classroom is that you never need most. You don't need, if you got a classroom of 25 students, you don't need 
15 of them flipping out so that you can't teach the classroom. That's all. So it's enough. Mm. Are, Are enough of them depraved? To the degree. Now, I'm not saying that they're depraved in a sense that like, or the yeah, they're black, they're born depraved. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, you know, they're traumatized as children. Uh, they, they don't love their parents. The parents don't love them. They don't have a, a, a sense of morals. They don't understand what character is. It's all these different elements, but some of them like to do that thing. It's not, it's not, I got to put a pack of oodles and noodles on my stove. So I'm going to go steal a dollar and let that stretch until Thursday so that Lord willing, Lord willing, I don't have to rob anybody until Thursday. Thursday. And you're, saying, and you're saying in Hillbilly America, 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 in Hillbilly America, America, they don't have those have same issues. Them. They don't have the same issues with little kids blow, doing meth and, and, and little kids doing break and entries. And little kids, yeah, yeah, you got me, yeah, or their you uncles, got or their uncles, or their or their inbred cousins trying to have yeah. sex with individuals. They yeah. have the same issues. Those are humanity issues. No, 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 no. They but have you, those. Issues. You live in the black areas, so you see oh, it from no, the vantage no. point of an individual sitting in the black community seeing it. But if I pick you up, put you in Missouri, put you in country North Dakota, you would see the same thing taking place. No, a you won't. Level taking place, but it oh, wouldn't won't. be on CNN. It wouldn't be in the news. Okay, mm-hmm. they wouldn't be shooting little Johnny from for raping little Susie. They wouldn't shoot him down for that. You are seeing it from the perspective of what but you are supposed to environmentally. No, 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 no way, no way, not at all. That's I. I don't even. I, I don't even think that that approach is plausibility. Everybody is manifestly evident what I'm saying. I think we all know what it's like. Like, rappers ain't rapping about nothing. They're not making all this stuff up. And there's a reason that you only hear this subject matter in rap music, but you don't, like, they're not talking about this. They're not talking about body niggas niggas and flipping bricks. They're not talking about rolling up the Road time. Road time. They're not talking about <laughs> that in country music. They're not talking about that. Yeah, I don't know what they're talking, they talking about in that metal where they like, because like, I can't American. understand it. Right, kill so, your father, kill your father. Right, they could be. I really, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're doing. So it's possible. Yeah. Guns and Roses, Guns and Roses, kill your father, kill your father. But if they are, <laughs> what we don't <laughs> see is a proliferation of it out in the world. You don't see you don't see white serial killers. You don't see you don't see you don't see uh, I don't know I don't see Jim Jones. You don't see you don't see man Jim Jones was back in the 70s. Brother (laughs) so you're saying there's no modern day Jim Jones there's no modern day individuals out there like Jeffrey Dahmer you don't see them individuals out here there are no I look I ain't gonna argue that point you if I had to put my money on it, I'm gonna say there's more white serial killers than there are black serial killers. That'd be good. I'm gonna say there's more white rapists than there are black rapists. This is what well, listen, hope. This is what we're gonna do. So there is gonna be a part two of this because we I, I gotta go pretty soon. I have a I have a business thing to get on um in about okay. uh, 15. But we're gonna come back, we're gonna bring those stats up because I did look at some stats. I, like that I don't have it on my mind right now. And I saw some stats were very, very um interesting when it comes to those particular crimes, who does what more. And I know the population is bigger, so it's kind of the numbers are kind of crazy anyway. But there were a lot regarding um, uh, uh, the white culture, right? That had a lot of these crazy crimes in comparison to the, some of the crimes that black folks are committing. And I think what we're talking about here too, is something that I'll call black, black responsibility. responsibility. And and, and, it, and it, we, we absolutely are have to be responsible, responsible for ourselves first, first and foremost. And foremost but Black responsibility does not overwhelm the the influence and the trauma of racial um, prejudice and systemic and systematic racism that is still pervasive in black. How do we know? How do we know that? How do we know? Because actually, I cannot imagine if if black culture was such that 
everybody was just like, uh, you need math tutoring? Don't you got a black person on your block? Man, you better take it to the black person. They can help. You know all black people who are smart at math. If if these were the types of things where all around, I mean, people like, no, nah, man, you know black people don't spend no money on them cars, man. Black people buy used cars and they run them drones down into the ground. If that's the kind of stuff that we, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now because people would be wanting to be around black people all the time. People would be clamoring for positions at, at these black businesses that uh, that have been started, these black Fortune 500 Bro, I companies. Can say if, if black people weren't given the tales of the oxes to eat, right now, oxtail would not be a delicacy in the black community. You have to understand what is the antecedent of the current culture. So there is but a reason that black people are pimping out their cars. There's a reason that they're putting gold teeth on every tooth and rings on every so finger. So why weren't they putting they're hoarding wealth? Every every psychological in the every psychologist will tell you a little child that has been moved from place to place and has not been able to keep his things. The reason he hoards is he hoards because he has never been able to keep his possessions. And as a people. We have never been able to keep our possessions. So why are we the number one consumers? Because but, we but most are people don't possession no. because we own actually nothing. I mean, it, I, it is it is a behavior. It is a is a traumatic behavior that comes due to the treatment and the trauma of systematic racism in our community. No, I, I I do like that. I mean, I, I think it sounds to me that. Like, I like your sociological imagination with that, but I, I just don't think it's a plausible explanation mm. um, because I I don't think that we saw, we the, saw same the same variety. variety. Now, again, yeah, so I'm yeah, not so looking I'm not. at the thing that, to say, like, you know, I, maybe they ain't have grills 100 years ago, so I'm not talking about a specific thing. That kinda, what I'm saying is, well, they did. But Motown, I don't know that there was what Motown, right? These black these 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 artists are taking Cadillacs instead of money, so that they can drive down the street and say, "Look at okay. me, I got a Cadillac." Right. Well, so that that's that's kind it's of us. Well, you know what? Let's, 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 um, kind of, kind of, if, 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 if we could, if we could, and I go ahead, finish your last comment, uh, uh Tosha, and then Bishop Bre uh, Breton, if you yeah. could uh, comment, because we're gonna come back next week to this, and maybe uh, uh, we're not well when Dr. Um, Singwetti can join us as well. But we'll continue this conversation. This is a really good conversation, man. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. going to continue this. I know the viewing audience wants to see more. So definitely just go ahead and have your closing remarks so we can close it for today. And we'll come back again um, on the 1st of April. Uh, so shut up. July. Why well, I, so I'll just close out with <laughs> what I was going to say for the, on the Cadillac thing. Cadillac thing, right? Um, that everybody likes nice things, and and we know that, and there's nothing wrong with liking nice things. Um, but at back in that time when we had a reputation for liking Cadillacs, we we should have been having a reputation for liking land. We like, should have been like, having a reputation for, for liking land. Okay, I agree. we should have been having a reputation for liking real estate. We should, that, that's what we should, but okay, that, you know, that ain't the worst thing. And what I, I say that that kind of split the difference between where we were coming from, because the other side of that is that black people may have had a, you know, they might've been like, they like gold chains or Cadillacs or this or that, uh, expensive shoes and suits, but ain't nobody think that uh, black men didn't have a reputation for robbing and uh, beating black women. And other black men and, and shooting black children. Like that, we have built that reputation off of the acts of it. If if I hear that a child has been shot because of the amount of times it's happened, I automatically think it's a black child in the black hood. Black hood, not you know. I but that's where I go. I automatically think that, and it's not for nothing. So I'm not the only person that thinks this. The reason I don't believe that racism isn't real is because I think that there are other people who think that way. They may happen to have a different color skin, but they know where they're more more than likely safe. 
you know where you're more than likely safe. safe. So you, so you, you, you know, you know, Stokes is certain places you gonna have your wife take the kids at a certain time of day, and a certain thing you gonna be like, no, like you know, I, I, I'm not gonna. Lie. I can't just go down there and walking around. And it's not because we're afraid of the other man. This is what we talking about dealing with ourselves. So, so I really I just, just think well, see, I, I, I like that you brought that. That's another layer that I think we need to unwrap to eventually, because there yeah. is a layer of the black on black situation that it's that's a big that's a big issue. Um, yeah. And we can we can unwrap that. Like, we're, we're, I don't know that black people actually have a bigger have problem, problem than that in the United States, States of America. Of America. Ain't, no Ain't no bigger problem, problem than all, all the violence that's going on in the hood. If all if that all was calm down, down, people would have money. Stores would be coming, coming into the hood. They wouldn't. Have problems, um, you know, worrying about worrying opening about up and closing up, closing up worrying about, about their businesses business getting robbed and all of that. that. So it's, it's like it's the, 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 the hood could be prosperous. Interesting. So uh, Bishop Brayton's gonna close us out. And thank you, though. Thank everybody thank out there. Absolutely. absolutely, absolutely, bro. Um, what I was gonna say is that when you have systematic racism, and if it doesn't exist, if systematic racism doesn't exist. And civilization planning also doesn't exist. If systematic racism doesn't exist, then philosophy and ideologies don't exist. What we have with system, systemic racism in America, in areas that are urban populations, is you have a malevolent plan to create chaos in black communities. And how do you do that? You deprive a community of wealth and it's like a bunch of little children gathered together and you take a few coins and you throw the coins on the ground and you'll see those kids jumping on top of each other and fighting and wrestling to pick up those coins. If you deprive people of wealth and then you throw in drugs and you throw in the ability to, to um, get ahead by the selling or the moving of, of weapons, if you throw those things into a community, individuals that are deprived of wealth, will jump over themselves, kill each other, fight each other, will we'll, we'll, we'll say that we own this particular corner and we own this particular building to accumulate those situations of wealth that have been thrown at them. And those things are not done from the bottom up. They're done from the top down. And so the black community has been a victim of plans even to cause chaos to still operate in urban centers and and then to turn around and say while we have created a perfect storm of criminality we will also create laws that police them harder we will now create systems that allow them to be incarcerated longer so that at the end of the day the plight of the black man's poverty becomes a financial benefit of individuals elsewhere because this is an economic model. The United States of America is an economic experiment, an economic experiment that utilized black free labor to cause other individuals from colonized countries to become wealthy and to become rich. And that experiment still continues today and it still has the foundational principle that it used from the very beginning. Utilize black people, for the benefit of other individuals and cause black people to remain, remain at the bottom, 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 bottom of society, society and, keep and keep them there with their power, power without, without, without the ability, the ability to defend, without, without access, access to, to, to information, information access, access, access to education, education and access, and access to, to progressive, progressive lifestyle. lifestyle. And that's, and that's what, what I believe that we're seeing in systemic racism in the United States of America, where people who are supposedly should be should running be the country running. are still at the same place they were in 1863. The black um, population of America, this is according to Dr. Claude Anderson, controlled 1% of the wealth when Lincoln freed the slaves and you still control only 1% of the wealth today. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Very well <clears throat> said. Very well said. Thank you, gentlemen. I, please, just please one. Oh, just one. one. Just one. <laughs> Bishop, Bishop give him a chance, man. Give him a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Just, one. just one. All right, make it quick, bro. Make it quick. It's going to be so quick. quick. We are going to come seconds. back. <laughs> but you got to be echoing, though, Carol. You got to be echoing. We do know that Claude Anderson harped on, harped on, harped on inappropriate behavior. 
inappropriate behavior is the reason that we don't have this uh th th uh this this community political economic structure that uh Dr. Anderson taught us about. And I would venture to bet, and I, you know, I, this may not be an answer that any one of us can answer, but I want to ask this question basically to y'all and, and everybody, which, which could be rhetorical. But if somebody took everything from you today, would you become a criminal tomorrow? Because if there are some people who would not, they they going to get up, brush themselves off, but they're not going to become a criminal just because somebody took from them. If somebody took everything from me today, I'm coming to his house to take it back well, from him tomorrow. <laughs> but because he controls the police, the judge, the presidency, he's calling my, my stealing, stealing criminality. criminality. He's calling, he's calling his stealing his legal. legal. But he's still a thief. See, he's this still is why I'm saying, murder, so we're going we to we come back. Hey, 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 gentlemen, we're going to come back. we definitely going to come oh, back. Man. I know it's burning, man. We can go on for two. Yeah, yeah, but it's been beautiful. It's been, been beautiful. beautiful. Thank our yeah, viewer yeah. audience for your patience. Yeah, Listen, yeah. I know they enjoyed this tonight. Yeah. We will be back. Um, July 1st, not okay. April. I'm sorry for that not mistake. April, okay. But this is the round table. And at the round table, what we do is we have that discussion amongst each other, amongst family. Um, I like the scriptures in Galatians 2 um, and 11 says, but when Peter was come to Antioch, this is Paul speaking, I withstood him to the face because he was to blame. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself fearing them that were of the circumcision. And that's exactly what we're doing, right? We're having that conversation. We are bringing folks to the table to have that conversation, even if it's uncomfortable. We want to have it because in order for us to do better, we got to confront it. Amen. So next time, we'll see you next week. It's not circumcision or uncircumcision that are to anything, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be upon them and upon the Israel of God. God bless you. Amen.